Jello Beats, holla at me. Ara cuera cuera. Let's go. Welcome to A to Z Sports Live, presented by Boston Scientific, streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, I am your host, Will Skywalker Steel. Boom! Where they at, though? Hey, hey. You read the title. The Cowboys get the cooking over the weekend, man. Lots to dive into about it, man. They finally, finally land their wide receiver after many weeks of speculation. And we're going to break it down. We're going to break it all down from the trade details to the fit, to the film, to everything. And I'm going to tell you why. This is an all-in approach. Yep. This is an all-in move for the Dallas Cowboys, and we'll discuss that later on. Plus, in the roundup, we got some uh, free agency news. So, so now that the Cowboys landed their guy, they can now move on to acquiring or looking into outside free agents, and that's what they'll do starting today. We got three names. I'm going to discuss one of them in detail in the roundup, but today will be about breaking down this Brandon Cooks deal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Cowboys got their guy, and it's a fantastic fit. It's a fantastic trade, and I want to talk about it with y'all. So call in, 351-999-3787. What's up, Bomb Squad? Bomb Squad! Oh, look, look. He calls himself the Archer, right? So I do this for y'all, but but now I'm doing it for Brandon Cooks, right? Um, Man, I was really excited. I was eating my cereal when this happened. And got the news, and, you know, when you do what we do, I'm just going in, right? And my cereal got soggy. I didn't even care. Uh, Michelle was like, oh, it must, must be something big because you got real quiet. I tend to get quiet when I start doing stuff on my phone in regards to Cowboys. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal uh, what happened. And then, boom, I jump into the lab. We get, we get to the film. And, man, it's a, it's a, it's a good day. For, it was a good day for the Cowboys. should be a good week for the Cowboys. And guess what? They ain't done. They ain't done. I say finally they landed their their wide receiver, but I think it's it's finally that they have won away from ignoring these two pillars that we talked about, and we'll and we'll discuss more of that uh, in the roundup. I, I try to do a little remix at the beginning, but I got carried away. I don't give a damn about no copyright. I don't care because I told y'all if if Stephen Jones went out there. It made a similar move like this where he's spending some money. Jello Beats, holla at me. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I told y'all what was going to happen, man. So let's go ahead and uh, get into this roundup because we got a fun and fantastic show Wait for y'all. It's 
outside. Time? It is time for... It's time for the Morning Roundup. Round them up, boys. Hey! Yo. Before we get to Brandon Cooks, there's a couple other things I want to talk to you about. In the Roundup, you know how we do. So... Dallas pretty much ignored the outside free agent market last week, electing to focus on their guys, right? Electing to bring back their free agents and navigate the trade market and the Odell Beckham market for a wide receiver. They spent most of their time doing that. But now it's time to look outside. And they they are deciding to visit with three or three free agents are coming to visit Dallas. Linebacker. Uh, Trevin Howard, offensive lineman Chuma uh, Idoga, who was a target for the Cowboys last year in trade talks. And the headliner, running back Ronald Jones, a.k.a. Rojo. So we had fun last week with the, the Leonard Fournette thing, right? Like, like I, I'm, I'm serious in regards to a Leonard Fournette type of situation. And this is exactly the type of situation. Uh, the basis of it, the player we could go back and forth with and, and Kiki and he he about, but the basis of it, I'm steadfast on a veteran power back that the Cowboys should be looking into. And this is exactly what they're deciding to do. Uh, they're trying to look into a veteran power back. This guy just happens to be a little younger veteran power back, former second round pick uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who played the role in their Super Bowl run. If you guys remember. He played the role in their Super Bowl run. He won, technically, if we, if we want to be honest, technically he won two Super Bowls. But he ain't do nothing in the second one with the Chiefs. But has two Super Bowls, one real one, and he's a tough-nosed, hard-nosed, downhill running back. That's what he is. And he's got some springs still left in his legs, in my opinion. This isn't a dude who is is sitting on 1600 carries or anything like that no so he signs a one-year deal with the chiefs right and he thought that he might be the guy there but he ended up getting lost in the sauce because a pacheco starts stepping up a jerick mckinnon is more dual threat and the chiefs like a guy that's a little bit more dual threat that's not necessarily rojo's game not saying he can't catch the ball at the backfield he had like 30 and 40 receptions in tampa when he was a part of a rotation but that's not really his game his game is getting downhill and running tough and making a miss but he got lost in the sauce he only had 17 carries last year so essentially he took a year off if we're being honest he basically took a year off of wear and tear took a year off of of getting beat up at the running back position especially for a guy that you know is going to run like look how he hits the the outside for a big dude like that. Well, for a downhill runner like that. So he's not a guy coming off of a high carry season. And honestly, it's a good thing for him, I think, because he had about 500 carries in the three previous seasons when he was a part of that Tampa Bay rotation. So now, he, you know, he pretty much gets a fresh year off and you, you get a pissed off Rojo. Hey, man, sign me up. Sign me up, you know. Um... This backfield is going to need some complimentary pieces of Tony Pollard. I think Rojo, Ronald Jones, is a complimentary piece, and he does absolutely nothing to stop you from drafting a running back anywhere you want to. I don't care if you want to do it at first. He doesn't stop you from doing that. So, you know, I I, I love this uh, inquiry. I like that they're bringing him in here, as my guy Law Nation would say, for a cup of coffee. And, you know, I think this, this guy would fit or complement the backfield perfectly uh you know the cowboys are all about trying to get into the draft not having a bunch of holes to fill and right now there's a clear hole right at the running back position because you only have two now when i say clear hole that hole was dug deep it's not at the top because you got tony pollard and malik davis but you're going to need at least four guys going into camp in my opinion i love to have four guys going into the season um and i think rojo could be a part of that rotation man at the very least you bring him in, you see what he has competing with the running backs. And if it doesn't work out, it's not going to cost you anything to move on. So I, I like the uh, inquiry here with Ronald Jones.
Well, Sky, how, you know, how the Cowboys going to have money to sign their rookies if they're making all these trades? I see this on Twitter a lot. I see this. I've seen it here a few times. You usually don't have a problem signing your free aid, your, your rookies, man. Like you don't. But let's give some actual numbers to the situation here. It only costs the Cowboys roughly $3 million on a cap to sign their rookies per over the cap. So when, you know, people are screaming at you, if you're out there in the barbershops or you're arguing with fans, y'all ain't going to have money. You can't do it. You can. You can sign whoever you want. You can do whatever you want. It's only going to cost you $3 million to sign these rookies. Uh, if you want to look it up, just Google rookie pool estimates, click on over the cap, and you'll see the Cowboys only need about three. It's actually a little bit less. $3 million to the cap because of where they're picking. So don't let anybody tell you <laughs> that the Cowboys are needing XYZ amount of money to sign their rookies. By the way, Ezekiel Elliott's $10 million, $11 million that you'll get post June 2nd will also help you do that if you struggle to do so, which I don't believe the Cowboys will struggle to do so. Currently, right now, the Cowboys sit at about uh, $10 million roughly in salary cap space. So they got plenty to sign their rookies and plenty to make another move. Maybe we're getting a little bit greedy. I think the heavy lifting is about done. And a part of that heavy lifting is obviously the headlining story of the day. That's the Cowboys landing Brandon Cooks. Last week, if you guys remember, we talked about the big four names that if the Cowboys landed would make the team better and you should be happy. All right. D hop, Jerry, Judy, Odell Beckham, and of course, Brandon Cooks. To me, the Cowboys got the second best option, but likely the most realistic one. Odell Beckham was always a fallback plan for me. I ain't saying for everybody else. Some people actually wanted Odell Beckham, and that's fine. Odell was, if you miss on the other guys, you fall on Odell, cool. But that was never the top priority to me. Jerry Judy presented to, you know, too many contractual issues. We talk about this a lot, where him and Lamb... Same contract year, same fifth year option. That that that'd be tricky. Um, I just didn't think that that. I mean, it makes sense from a player standpoint, but I I didn't know if they would be able to make that work. Plus, compensation got a little bit weird. DeAndre Hopkins. I tweeted out. Don't <laughs> don't poo poo getting Brandon Cooks because he ain't DeAndre Hopkins. My guy Crumb said something along the lines of. And Crumb, if you're in here, you could drop it yourself. Don't ignore good for perfect. Right? Like, this is this is a really good move. It may not have been a perfect move. It may not have been DeAndre Hopkins, Randy Moss, or whatever. This is a really good move. And if we're being honest, Brandon Cook Cooks was most likely the most realistic option of the bunch. He's the guy that was in the mix during the deadline. It almost happened. And Houston said, no, we want a second round pick. Dallas and Houston kind of agreed on a third. And then that fell through. Then you had the money situations and that fell through. Well, now what could have been finally happens months later. And Brandon Cooks couldn't be more happy. He was pissed off at that deadline because he thought he was going to be a cowboy. Uh, here's a couple quotes from KPRC2 where he had a telephone interview about the trade. He said, quote, Man, honestly, I just feel blessed really for this opportunity to contribute to something that's already special for the Jones family believing in me and the coaches and players. I look forward to joining something that's special and help bring that mindset everywhere I go and everywhere he goes. He's been extremely productive. Here's Cooks on, you know, having a, a lot left in the tank and maintaining his speed and ability through a dedicated workout and diet regimen, which is also part of the article. He says, no doubt if you know me. I don't really talk about it. I feel better at this age than I've ever felt before. With the way I take care of my body, there's no slowing down anytime soon. Brandon Cooks, happy to be a Cowboys, ladies and gentlemen. Happy to be a Cowboy, and Cowboys fans should be happy that he's here. Now, seeing some fans, I already seen it in the chat. I've seen it on Twitter. 
Ah, this does nothing for me. Ah, he's a... Okay, I mean, that's fair. Everybody has their opinion. Everybody uh, will, 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 will react differently to, to this. And if it's one thing that I've realized covering the team, you know, as, as intently as I have over the last three years or so, is that you're never, ever, 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 ever going to make Cowboy fans happy as a whole. As a whole. You have some people that will be, some people that won't be. That's just probably every fan base, but damn sure Cowboy fans because we need what? We need to win. But for the most part, it seems like Cowboy fans are pro this trade. And I don't know how you couldn't be. But before we get to, to that aspect of it, I want to talk about something that could be even a bigger, a big picture outlook on this situation. I tweeted this out on uh, Sunday. I said, you know, Dallas is coming to the realization you got to be players in something other than the draft. We talk about that a lot on this channel. Getting dudes via free agency, I'm sorry, via trade before signing an outside bargain free agent, I didn't have on the offseason bingo card. I did not. I did not have that one. Why we talk about this a lot here is because the way the NFL was working, this is what you got to do. This is the game you have to play. And it's even more important for the Cowboys to play this game because they're constantly relying on their draft picks, right? And they're constantly, for the most part, picking later in these drafts. So you're not getting kind of the top tier guys. Yeah, you can get some steals of the draft and everything, right? And we talk about that learning curve that these, these rookies are going to have or these young players are going to have. You're not always going to hit everywhere. So you need to be able to balance that out with some dudes you need it to be able to navigate the free agency market and the trade market before we go on let's look at the trade details from the brandon cooks and why this was chef's kiss this was a fantastic deal shout out to the front office this is a fantastic deal the cowboys sent a 2022 fifth round pick 2023 sixth round pick to houston and obviously houston sends back brandon cooks Here's what makes this an A-plus move, in my opinion. Houston is taking $6 million of the $18 million, which would have been cap hit, essentially. So you're going to get $12.3 million cap hit for getting Brandon Cooks. Possibly for just a year. Could be more. 2023, you'll have a $12.3 million cap hit. 2024, if you keep him, it'll be $16.5 million cap hit. Now, they don't necessarily have to keep him. He has no more guaranteed money in 2024, meaning they could essentially move him off the books in 2024 at any point. Doesn't have to be June 1st. Doesn't have to be, uh, you know, later on. It can be right after the season if they don't like what they saw or he's, you know, he's a bust or whatever and save $16.5 million on cap. $16.5 million can be saved on the cap if you don't like Brandon Cooks, y'all. I mean, this is just a, from just looking at the deal in and of itself, this is a great get. Because you still get a quality player. Obviously, when he was signed, I said, okay, let me go do a little bit more homework on one Brandon Cook. Cooks, I'm sorry. And I don't know how you can, you know, go look at the film and come away disappointed with this guy or come away saying he's wa <laughs> he's washed. He's anything but, man. So scouting Brandon Cook. Here is what I came away with when scouting Brandon Cook. I said he still has that legit threat. That's um, that legit speed to threaten the defense, and you have to respect it. Mind you, this is a 4 3 guy coming out of college, I believe 4 3 3, and he still can move that way. He's savvy and experienced enough to know how to attack coverages. If you look at this play right here that I broke down, uh, I actually broke it down on Twitter. This is him using his speed and using his savviness at the top of the route to throw off Samuels Jr., by the way. A really good young corner to draw the flag. 
You see him do that, do that throughout the film in general. This isn't, no offense, Noah Brown, Dennis Houston. This isn't a guy that has to learn how to beat NFL coverages and beat NFL cornerbacks. He knows what he's doing. He's physical at the catch point. This guy is only 5'10". All right. We'll throw it deep and mess around and find out. He's 5'10", but he doesn't play like a little dynamo. He has great ball tracking skills and he can go up and get the rock. Now, when you watch him you know, in Houston over the last couple of years, he was sent on a ton of shallow crossers and, 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 and he can yak you up if you get caught in man. But one of the things I like when I, when I saw him go on some of these shallow routes, right, he understands what he sees versus zone. So he knows, OK, I can't continue my route into the guy. I'm going to sit down, boom, and make myself present. Now, am I always going to get the ball? No. But these are the things you don't have to worry about when you grab a dude like a Brandon Cooks. You don't have to worry about him being where he's supposed to be or knowing what he sees out there in coverage. He's a smart guy. He understands and uses his leverage to create separation, whether it be from a short, intermediate, or deep route tree. And here's the kicker to me. He knows how to use his speed with his route running. That sounds basic. But when you're a speed guy, when we've seen speed guys in the league, not here in Dallas, but speed guys in the league, they just nine route, post route. They want to get to where they got to get to right away, trying to beat you with their speed. I've had conversations over the last couple of years with, with Jesse about the patience of wide receivers. And I think he uses his patience to speed. The transition is easy from patience to speed. You get an aware guy, a legit fast guy, a guy that can run good routes. What's the drawbacks, guy? Got a little handsy issue. <laughs> a little, got a little handsy issue sometimes. He, he he dropped the ball. He'll drop the ball on you a few times. But Cowboys Nation, this isn't this isn't just your run of the mill acquisition. This is not. This is a dude. This is a bamf. This is a. A badass mother effer. It's not DeAndre Hopkins, but it doesn't mean he can't be a difference maker for the Cowboys. And he damn sure ain't washed. I can tell you that. So when you bring in a Banff, when you bring in a dude, two of them now, Gilmore and Cooks, this conversation kind of circles back to what we talked about last week. For the Cowboys to be all in, it wasn't going to take a, 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 a L.A. Rams approach. It wasn't going to take a New York Giants of 2016 approach. It wasn't even going to take a Jacksonville Jaguars signing everybody approach. It was only going to take a couple moves because the Cowboys do something that the rest of the league doesn't do on a consistent basis. And that's draft well. Had they not made this move, my conversation was going to be the reason why the Cowboys should do stuff like this is because they draft well. So if they miss, no one's really tripping because you can draft well enough to replenish what you lost. In my opinion, they should be the biggest risk takers. So how does this indicate they're all in? It's not the compensation. It's not that they traded a first round pick. It's the money. It is the money. I don't recall, and y'all can help me out. I don't recall the last time the Cowboys have dedicated $10 million plus on the cap to veterans, to dudes, to whomever, in free agency market, and trade market, whatever, the first week of free agency, the second week of free agency, before we get to camp. I don't recall it. Gilmore is going to cost you about roughly $10, 11000000 million. Cook is going to cost you roughly about twelve. That's 20 million plus on a cap this year to a Brandon Cooks and a, and a Stephon Gilmore. And when money was being moved around last week, you felt like something was going to happen, right? And then boom, Gilmore happens. Then they move more money around and boom, Cooks happens. You don't do that, right? You don't move money around, grab these guys if you don't have the mentality that I'm all in. And damn it, that's all we've been asking for is show that you are all in is show 
that you understand the landscape of the NFL and now you need you know how or you are going to operate within it to win a championship. You couldn't just rely on the draft. You couldn't continue to feed us the foo-fooness that you were feeding us for years. Now, some of y'all may have bought that. Not me. I came over here with the with the drop and everything. I, I'm not conditioned anymore. This is how you got to move. And for Dallas, yeah, it's not D-Hop. Yeah, it's not Jalen Ramsey, whatever. But these are still two quality, really good players that I think can help the Dallas Cowboys, dare I say, get over the hump. I mean, individually, they may, they may not be considered hump players, but when you put them together, feels like hump moves. And, I, and I've been saying this for the last two or three seasons on this channel. You got to make a hump move. You got to get a hump player or whatever. Maybe individually they're not hunt players, but together feels like a hunt move. Dallas, Cowboys Nation, Bomb Squad, we need to applaud the front office. These two moves, to me, are fantastic deals, and they put the Cowboys in a great position heading into the draft. Now, the work is not done. No, no, no. no. The work's not done. They still got holes they need to plug. Uh, easier holes, in my opinion. We talked about defensive tackle, running back, uh, maybe add another linebacker. But but these, I think, are easy, easy positions that you can plug and uh, and play per se right now in free agency. But heading into the draft, this team is in one of the best shapes probably in the National Football League. I mean, I, I haven't won across the league, right? But I think the Cowboys are in fantastic shape to come out the draft and not have to rely on your rookies across the board. And say, hey, man, we only need, you know, some type of participation at a high level from one or two of you guys, as opposed to five or six. That way, if a Jalen Tobert happens again, you're not like, ah, what a waste of a pick. It's like, ah, he's developing. Speaking of which, in Jalen Tobert, you know, we talked about having the wherewithal to be all right with letting a Jalen Tobert develop for another year if you land one of these top four guys. I'm all in with that. Same thing with a, a Clark. Now, I don't think they're going to go out and get a Brandon or Brandon, a Bobby Wagner. I don't think that's going to happen, right? But Jalen Tobert gets another year to develop and come along, and I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly fine with that because you get better in the room. And what the beauty of Brandon Cooks, when I was watching the film, he can play on the outside. He can slide in and play slot. He's mostly an outside guy. Uh, I don't think he's going to play, obviously, the X position. That'll be Michael Gallup. I don't think you'll see Michael Gallup slide inside at any point. He usually plays somewhere around like 3 4% in the slot. But what I noticed about Brandon Cooks is he was pretty much used almost in the same manner as C.D. Lamb was used. A guy that was, you know, at snap motion, motion to stack, get him in a bunch formation, can play outside, can play inside. The games, if if Mike decides to, that he can play with, with Cooks and C.D. Lamb, it's going to be fun to watch. Now, I, I want to see what C.D. Lamb can do a, as a pure Z guy, a guy that plays on the boundary. But you do have to have some versatility, right? Like you don't want to be... You don't want to show your hand every single time somebody lines up. Well, he's going to play on the outside 98% of the time. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what Cooks allows you to do is they can play that game. Who's going to motion this time? Who's going to who's going to be in the slot this time? And that'll indicate CB3 or CB1. Much like Gilmore, right? Gilmore is not going to face wide receiver one all day. God damn it, Brandon Cooks ain't going to face cornerback one all day. He goes from Houston with that quarterback situation, with defenses paying so much attention to him, to Dallas, where defenses can't pay attention to him as much as they did in Houston because he's likely the two guy where Lamb is one. He's likely going to play more in the slot than he's played in the slot over the last couple of years. Or even if he plays on the outside, now you got C.D. Lamb against C.B. 3. Let's go. Just, 
just a fantastic get. Um, I don't think he's going to be a stranger to this West Coast offensive shift that we'll see here. Uh, you're going to see more slants, right? You're going to see more quick, quick reads, get the ball in his hands. That's what he can do. He can yak you up. He can make something happen after the catch, too. Well, this is a quality move, man. Uh, one of the big four names, but likely the most realistic fit. And in my opinion, the, the second best player of the four. So if people are upset they didn't get DeAndre Hopkins, don't be. Investigate more. Do more research. You'll come away with this being a, a, just, a, just a great move, Cowboys Nation. Just a, just a great move. A great fit. He's a veteran. He's a hungry veteran. And in my opinion, it's it's kind of plus size T.Y. Hill. Right? T.Y. was the veteran guy that come in here and help a C.D. Lamb, etc. But this is a younger version, a, a more recently better version, in my opinion, of a of T.Y. Hill. You could come in here, help C.D. Lamb, you know, show these, these young guys the way of the land in the NFL to be a top tier uh, wide receiver and get what you want to get to. Look, Gilmore's a Super Bowl champion, defensive player of the year, pro bowler. Brandon Cooks has been to the Super Bowl twice, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong, but it, but it feels like he's been to the Super Bowl twice. I know he's been to one, period. So he's been a part of that. You get these guys in the locker room. You got something cooking, man got something cooking now i knew these phone lines were going to be crazy so i'm gonna shut up i'm gonna get you guys on the horn and we're gonna rap about this all right let's start off with cj what's good brother what's going on man I ain't talked to you in a while been a while <laughs> It, it, it's but, been uh, since what Friday? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't called in a while. My bad, Cal. My oh, bad. this is so, CJ. Uh, I'm looking at DJ. I, I'm, I'm thinking DJ, but this is CJ. Okay, okay. Uh, There's too many. I got a lot of these. There's a lot of names up here. But what's good, CJ? A lot, lot of J's. A lot of J's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Scott. Hey, first of all, did you uh, did you catch BMF this weekend? But I, I did catch BMF, man. Look, Fifty getting wild, man. <laughs> Yo. You can't, you can't predict them. You can't predict them, bro. <laughs> 50 getting wild. We, we, but, we, it's pretty much a laughable series at this point, but it, it is what it is. Yeah, man. So um, what I wanted to say is, what position do you think? Like, I feel like all the starting positions have been filled. Do, do you agree with that? Besides the Hankins? Yeah, I, I was about to say. I feel defense. like that's the only thing. Yeah. yeah. So, um... I, I, I'm thinking that in the first round, we end up trading back because you know how Jerry is. Uh, Jerry, if, if anybody we draft in the first round, he's going to want to start. Right? I mean, that's that's not just Jerry. I think that's the league in general in the salary cap era. You want your first round pick to, to if he's not going to start, to be an integral part of your rotation or what have you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like I said, we, we don't feel up most of the starting roles. So I see us trading back um, or either going offensive line first first round and letting so, Ty Smith be a swinger. Let me swinger. ask you this. When you say trade back, do you mean trade back and stay in the first or trade out of the first? Trade out of the first. Mm. See, I, I personally uh, think having that fifth-year option is worth staying in the first unless you get an absolute okay. haul, right? Unless you get like – Hey, somebody's going to give you a, an extra first round pick in 2024. Then, yeah, we out of there. But, but I think having that yeah. extra fifth round option, uh, I think is is valuable. Okay, because you know a week ago everybody was talking about us going uh, tight end that first. And honestly, I think I think Ferguson is is good to be our number one tight end. And one thing about us is. Normally, we hit late late draft or either free agents when it comes to tight end. So, yeah. I, I, I don't see us picking up a tight end in the first round at well, all. I'll tell you this, and this is why I, I love the 30 visits. If those tight ends are, are, you know, coming in for a 30 visit, 
then I think we should all start preparing for the possibility of that happening. Not saying that it's the end all be all, but the Cowboys usually yeah. tip their hand a little bit with their 30 visits. So uh, we got to pay attention to that. But, you know, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to fake the funk. I said if the Cowboys came out of free agency solidifying some of these these major needs and they, they have the ability to go into the first round BPA. It's really going to be hard to mess this up, yeah. and to get a top tier quarter, yeah. a top you know one of the top receivers since he's been in the dra- or in the league, I think it's going to be hard to mess up the first round. But I also don't think these guys should stop you from 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 doing things at those positions if a guy falls to you either. Okay, okay. I, I, I don't know why, but it's two it's two names that I just want to get back, and that's Hankins and Fowler. Oh, but sure. I see us going D E. First or second round now, it kind of covered that. Nolan spot. Smith. I mean, if Nolan Smith fall to you, I mean, that's party. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, call. I, I know you got a lot of calls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, appreciate I'll you. Man. This guy. All, All right, right, man. Let me let me get DJ. That that's who I was really trying to get in here. But good talk, CJ. Appreciate you, big dog. What's up, DJ? Hey, what's good? What's good, Scott? How you doing this morning, brother? Oh, fantastic, man. Yeah, it gets beautiful. Let, let me run this back. Finally, off-season moves have come back to <laughs> Dallas. Man, I don't remember the <laughs> last time we were this active in the first week, man. Man, it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and the beautiful thing is, the, the the best part about all of this is that it was late-round stuff. They, they're doing all yeah. of this for – if they were asking these guys to come in, if they were asking Gilmore and they were asking Cooks to come in and, and be the guy, yeah, it wouldn't mean that. But we have the guy already. This is additions too, you know. Um, and and like uh, CJ was just saying, I do want to bring back Hankins. I think that he's going to be he's the right amount of money and all that kind of stuff, and he had the right amount of impact for it to, to for it to mean a lot for the Cowboys. Yeah. Keeping the run and all that kind of stuff where it is. But outside of that, really at this point, I'm cool. Everything else on this, on the top of this, is, is, is gravy for me at this point. Now, they still have to do the right thing. If you have the opportunity to get, uh, you know, possibly Bobby Wagner, which I think he might be a little expensive for the money that's left over, um, or, you know, make a couple of other moves here and there then it would be awesome, you know, then everything else is just to the next level. But as let's just talk about what we've gotten right now. Yeah. Moving to the draft, any kind of additions, anything that they do from this point forward, they've addressed the major needs. It's just, it's just trying to round out the roster at this point. Absolutely. And, and that's what they, and you can see it, right? I, I, I love that there mm-hmm. seemed to be a plan. Um, in the sense of, okay, we're going to attack our guys first, right? And then we're going to try to upgrade the roster via trade after that. And now we're going to attack, you know, free agency in week two with guys to plug these smaller holes, right? And and, and, in years past, it didn't feel like there had been that plan. And I think they're acknowledging that they dropped the ball, not only at wide receiver, we already know that, right? They already said, hey, we, we messed that up. We messed that one up, our bad. And this is them trying to make up for it. But I think they're acknowledging that we can't come off a productive season and sit on our ass while the rest of the league is getting better. And what I mean is they came off of a 12-5 and season where, yes, they lost in a heartbreaking fashion against the Niners, but they came off a 12-5 and season in 2021 to sign James Washington and Ryan Nall. And then, obviously, they got Dante Fowler. That can't be the way to get better while losing one of their best players. So I think they came to the realization, okay, we're going to try to actively get better this week. We're going to try to make this team better on paper. I know I came out last year, not I, but Stephen Jones, came out last year and said, oh, you don't win Super Bowls in March. I mean, literally, you don't, but you can get better in March. And I think they're coming to that realization. And I hope this becomes a trend in the sense of, Hey, if we're on that cusp or if we have a good season, let's try to get better. Let's not try to win the deal or try to get cheap and make your team worse. Yeah, I mean, it, it, for for years it's felt like they the, the brand and everything transcended the players themselves. When yeah. the, play, the players make the brand. And, and I feel like they've had that backwards for years now, right? 
Um, and the, the big the big thing where everything kind of comes through fruition is that it's like they've been in this haze since 2016 when they got Zeke and all that kind of stuff. And then it's like when they were like, oh, we we got get we got to get rid of Zeke. All of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we can do this and we can do this in the off season. We don't just like our guys. It, and the thing is, is that when you look at the moves that they're making, it's almost like they're like, okay, so we've been planning, we've been planning and doing this for for years as as one way, like you just said, but we're also trying to not ignore. You know, they felt like they could ignore things before until it became an egregious issue. Yeah, you know, like when they. You got the uh, Amari Cooper back in uh, seventeen eighteen. I forget the, the year right off the top of the head. It's hurt. Yeah, they were but, yeah, man, a reactive franchise as opposed to being proactive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, so now you have the liberty to do whatever you want. If you want to go online, you can go online. If you want to go, uh, you know, uh, additions to wide receivers, you, you can do that. But it takes these moves to do that, and they will operate like this in the past without making these moves first. I think that I think that's what I've been trying to communicate. Like they would make these, they would act like they could do whatever they want to do, but not fill the holes that they need to fill first. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look, DJ, there's there's a clear indication of what you were trying to, you were hoping that would be last week, right? When you were saying, "Hey, man, this is different. This is different," and we were one move away from it really being different. I think this is. Now I know Tom hates when we say this, but I, but I don't think anyone can argue that this is a different approach. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the trade compensation. We've seen them trade for veterans for third, th- third, uh, three day three picks. But what makes it different is one, they're doing this in in week one of free agency, and two, they're not trading for bottom barrel of a veteran free agency that's going to cost you pennies on the dollar. They're trading for guys that are still worth their price tag, in my opinion. I think yeah. I think Cooks at twelve, and I think uh, uh, Gilmore at ten or eleven. At money five positions, oh, yes, they're worth that contract. So, you know, they haven't done this in quite some time. And and I know this isn't quite Brandon Carr going out signing a guy, but but this is equivalent to that. So when we move forward now in our in our offseason, you know, discussions, we we have a, some more evidence of the Cowboys now doing Brandon Carr-ish type of moves, and we can hold them to uh, that standard. Now we got to see how this plays out. But we know that it's in their cards. Yep, yep, and uh, I'm starting it right now. Uh, we we getting Bijan in the first because they have the ability to do that now. It's not it's not an overlying need. Oh, no. I think Bijan if he falls, <laughs> if he falls, which the way that the way that the mocks and everything is structured right now, he keeps falling. And I, I have this theory that I've had all off season where guys, the the guys that are making these mocks are hearing something. Now you can't listen to everybody, but there's certain ones that are hearing something. And and the closer we get to the draft, the more in line everybody gets. And Bijan is falling further and further down these boards. So I'm saying Bijan at 26. All right. Yeah. I mean that that that, that won't shock me. You know that that's that's a cowboy. You know they 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 love their running backs, and he's a, he's a he's a top tier player. I'm, we'll have this conversation moving forward though. Yes, sir. I'll let you get to it, brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Appreciate the chat. I saw somebody in here uh, brought up Stephon Gilmore's uh, cap hit for this year. So he's getting paid $11 million. That doesn't mean he counts $11 million in cap, according to um, Spotrack. So Spotrack actually has Stephon Gilmore at $9.9 million on the cap, not, not $11 million. So roughly, like I said, $10 million on the cap for Stephon Gilmore, and then um, 12, 12 3 on the cap for Brandon Cooks, which will come out to about 22 23 million dollars on a cap give or take a few depending on if they reach incentives and whatnot so i mean these are these aren't your normal run-of-the-mill moves uh there was an inkling that hey maybe this could be a different approach when they signed when they traded for gilmore because of the money that comes with it they usually don't do that the highest that they've done was robert quinn and very similar to cooks they made the Dolphins take extra money. So we did kind of have uh, some type of blueprint of how they wanted to acquire said guy. And they did the same thing with Brandon Cooks. Hey, you take you take some dollars. We'll take them off your hands and we'll see if we can hit. And if it doesn't work out, I, I won't be mad at them. Because some people will say, 
Oh, you'll you'll ridicule you'll ridicule them if if it doesn't work out. No, I won't. This shows me that they are attempting to try to 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 make big moves that will help this team get over the hump. And if it doesn't work out, they even have an out. I don't even know how you could be mad. There is an easy button out to get you 16.5 million to do it again if you want. Or use that to, to sign Diggs, sign Lamb. After this year, you can technically extend Micah, uh, Micah Parsons. So all around fantastic, fantastic move. Won't hear me complain about it. Uh, we got a lot of a lot of day ones in here. So if you're fairly new, hold tight. I'm going to get through my, my people's. And uh, th then we'll get to you, you know, so th that's how it works here. If you've been rocking, we'll, we'll get to you. If, if I don't, I'm not familiar with your number. Um, we'll see if you can jump the line at some point. Let's get Coach Marv. We got Coach Marv, Danny, Lamont, Landlord, Los, Nacho, Twan. We got a lot of people. But let's get Coach Marv on the line. What's up? There we go. What's oh, up, Coach? There you go. <laughs> I said, I thought I didn't need that up to your part. Hey, man. Excellent, excellent uh, job by the Cowboys. I, I, I see their strategy. And their strategy is they 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 make room for to, to make moves for those guys to come in where we don't have to do anything to restructure, don't have to do anything. We get, They fit. We get them, we fit. I think that they were, they, 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 they held true to those, um, uh, uh, things that they were sniffing on last year. I think they were sniffing on Gilmore last year, but yeah. hey, they they revisited. They revisited the Brandon Cook thing to and, and, and the price went down. They were already in the building with uh, negotiations with uh, uh, talks with it uh back in the season last year. So it was a you know, hey, we, we still want to make that deal. They made that deal. They they solidified themselves. In those two areas, I, I like the, the the moves that they made. Um, this receiver move is is and, and this guy. Let's be honest, man. Let's really be honest. Michael Gallup, when he wasn't hurt, he is what he is as a receiver. Not saying he's a bad receiver, but he's not. He would never be a, a guy that can ascend to a number one. You would hope he would be a number two. But I think the Cowboys realized that he can be a, a outstanding number three receiver, um, but he, he's not going to get – he's not going to be all world, never going to be an all pro type of wide receiver, but he can do some things that are very athletic and do some things and make some plays for you. Yeah, so, I, I think Michael Gallup can, can fit in a role and play it at a high level, but I don't know right. that I would rely on Michael Gallup to play at a higher level consistently – as my wide receiver 1B. Uh, we haven't seen that from him since 2019 uh, when he had, you know, uh, Cooper opposite of him. And he and he put up a good year, you know. But but it's been 2020, 2021, 2022 where injuries and, and you don't get healthier as you get older, right? Them things start to add up a bit. But he has a right. very specific set of skills, if I shout out Taken. He has a very specific set of skills that I think if you use his skills in that manner, uh, he can play to that level. Right. But I'm, but Michael Gallup, to me, is not a dude that, you know, week in, week out, I'm game planning, you know, you know, half of my passing playbook around I'm not doing it. Right. And so, so and, and this is a make or break year. Um, I, I don't see Michael Gallup being here unless he does something this outrageous this year. I don't see him because it, it, there's a real good out for him without it being a big hurt after next year. But we that's neither here or there. A great, great move by the Cowboys, Scott. I, I, I wanted to say something right quick. I know you got a lot of people on on, on February the fourteenth. I was on your on your show. We was talking, and I was telling you that uh, at this particular point in time, based off to make your team better, uh, I like the Cowboys position better than I like the Eagles position at that particular time on, on, on February the fourteenth. I went line. I knew the Eagles were going to be that that bird had sunk. And it's sinking fast. Yeah, they, I don't, they lost both safeties. Both yeah, safeties. I don't follow all these crazy. Uh, both safeties. Both one the best defensive tackle, two star linemen, linebackers, and the star to guard off the best offensive line. All of them were gone. And still ain't signed the quarterback yet. Like I said, we were in a position 
where we can make some good strategic moves and get better, they'll have to they got they got to spend the whole farm just to even stay relevant. I think we have made a position now to be able to win this NFC East without a problem and and get ourselves ready to get to the playoffs and do some major work. Kudos to the, the front office of what moves they made. Yes, we still got some couple of things we need to do, but I think we put ourselves in the position that we don't have to stress about them, and we can use the draft to really build some depth and, and some more pieces. Great show, Scott. Yeah, I'm not up on what the Eagles are doing. I know C.J. Gardner John- Johnson, I believe, dipped out, and I know last week we were kind of making fun of them about, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, the, the, the cornerback. Darius Slay. Darius Slay. Yeah, I know, I, I, yeah, I know he returned. And, and Brandon yeah, Cox returned. Yeah, I, but see, I'm not I'm I don't know their their roster up and down like that. Uh, but I know, do know they're in really good position in regards to draft picks, draft capital, uh salary cap, and they got Harry Roseman. And that's about as far as I'm gonna go as giving the goddamn Eagles any type of credit. Uh Dallas gotta handle business. You know, they've been to where we wanna be twice in the last six years. We are still doing this song and dance that you're doing right now where, hey, you know, we're in this great position. We got we do this. We do that. We just got to close it. That's all that matters in Dallas. We got to close it and get there and then we can start talking with our chest out. But until then, we ain't done shit. So to, to me, we got to get to that we point. Yeah, we got to we got to finish. We got to do got to finish. It's going to come to the players to make the play. No, yeah, we we well, yeah. Period. I mean, you got to get there, and then and then now we can start. You know, say it with your chest. Until then, I mean, Harry Roseman has walked around the Joneses two times now. You know, front and back. So it's kind of hard to really. I, I don't want to do this <laughs> because Philly has been where we want to be, and I hate to even say that. Ugh. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Enjoy your show, Scott. Keep Salute. pushing, brother. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, Danny Savage, what you got for us, man? Good morning, Sky. Good morning, Sky. Your new nickname is Sky Schmurder. Well, your new intro. That's your oh, new sh- nickname. Realize I was doing it. Quick question. Does it this, like, off-season, like, it seems like it's a little different? Like, it seems like someone else is working these trades, like Will McClay. You know, because not only are we trading for good guys, we're not getting rickrolled. We're not getting, like, we're not overpaying. You know what I'm trying to say? So, like, it feels, like, a little bit different. Like, maybe the Joneses took a step back. Uh, and they're letting Will do his thing. What do you think? I think Will has always been a part. Remember, and I don't, this is me not trying to come at Will, but he's the, the Uber Eats guy. Hey, this is what I want. This is how, I, you know, I want it. And go out there and see if you can find that. It, he's done it okay. before. Jonathan Hankins, he's done it with Michael Bennett. He's done it with, um, who do we just get? Uh, uh, Stephon Gilmore. He's done, like, now, now that's obviously this year, Robert Quinn. So I think Will McClay has been in, involved in this. In fact, it was Will McClay and Rob Marinelli who met with Robert Quinn uh, when they were courting Robert Quinn. So, I, look, Will McClay has always been involved in this situation. He just hasn't had the final say. And what makes this difference is the amount of money they're bringing back on on board. And we know damn well Will McClay don't got no say in the money uh, part of it. So I I don't think anything is different from the hierarchy. I just think Steven has kind of lightened his pockets a little bit and said, all right, we'll, we'll walk him in a little bit more salary to try to get a little bit better. Because how do you look around the landscape of the league and be like, we're just going to continue to rely on bottom barrel trades and, and bottom barrel free agent bargain shopping? You You can't do that. Yeah. Uh, I also think Brandon Cook's stretch in the field is going to open up the middle of the field big time. So I think whoever we plug in there, a tight end, Ferguson, uh, me personally, I would take a day three guy, a tight end. I think our tight end is going to have a big year because the middle of the field is going to be wide open. Uh, I like the Ronald Jones. Uh, if we do pick him up, he runs hard. But I'm going to give you two day three guys, and then I'm going to land the plane. One kid from Kansas, and he's a perfect West Coast back, Deuce Vaughn. And on top of it, his dad is a scout for the Dallas Cowboys. Perfect West Coast back. Then I'm going to give you a, a, a round seven guy, a blue. Round seven? Man, if you don't go and get round seven? 
I'm not even going to be watching the draft in round seven. <laughs> no, but I am. I'm going to give you a round seven bruiser. Oh Cameron Peoples out of Appalachian State. The kid's like 6'2", 230, and he's a touchdown machine. Because we got Pollard. You know, we got Malik who runs hard. If we can sign Jones, that's great. But like you said, I like going into the, to the season with four running backs. Did it last year? The Ravens lose like three running backs in one week. Oh, yeah, so they, I think. Well, she yeah, they, they, it was rough. They lost a lot of players. They lost half yeah, their damn they lost team. Three running backs yeah. in one week. So I just so Duzwan day three and the kid Cameron Peoples round seven round from seven. Appalachian oh, State. The kid six two two thirty and he's a touchdown machine. Appreciate so. You. I'm going to land the plane on that. And uh, it just feels like there's a little bit of a different vibe. God went out and got Gilmore, Man. went out and got Cooks. Now, I'm just my last question, and I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, and I'm landing the plane. Don't you think Brandon Cooks is our biggest speedster, deep threat since Rocket Ismail? Rocket. I'm talking about a guy that could just stretch the field. A real receiver, not like Kevontae Turpin type. Yeah, yeah, exactly. for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Easy. Easily. Perfect. Awesome. Great show as always. Looking forward to listening to you and Vox later on, man. Salute, Danny. Talk to you later, Scott. Danny gave me the round seven undrafted free agent priority free agents to look out for. Look, I ain't going to hold y'all. I, I will not be watching round seven. Uh, yeah. I'll be probably editing the, the picks from earlier in the day, to be completely honest with you. But, um, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think Cooks is likely the best speedster. I mean, Joey Galloway, actually. Let's just be honest. I mean, jo- Joey Galloway, Danny, I think you would agree with that. Uh, but that came after Rocket. But they kind of went away from it since Joey, really. And they're finally... This is another thing that shows me... Maybe this is the Mike McCarthy effect, right? Uh they went out and got, and then again, it's not about being too short because we've Randall Cobb, Kobe's, they've had short guys here, right? But getting a, a legitimate deep threat that can actually play 50, 60 snaps. There's a difference between, hey, we got Kevontae Turpin. In reality, we were never asking Kevontae Turpin to go out there and play 50 snaps. It was like, can you give us 10 and we'll target you three times, right? We'll give you, we'll give you the rock three times. Nah, this kid, here, this guy here, and Brandon Cooks, you can give the rock to legitimately five, six, seven, eight times. And here's the beauty of it. You might not even need to give it to him targeting 10 times for him to bust open a 100-yard game or a 70, 80-yard game for a touchdown because he still has a legitimate speed. But he can still be he can still be a possession guy because he's used to being the number one wide receiver. Or 1B, number two, what have you. Dallas, he don't got to be. He don't got to be. It also opens up more conversation later on down the line where we talked about the tight ends position, um, style of offense, etc. But those are conversations I kind of want to want to have throughout the season or throughout the uh, the week. Skid land low from Alabama in the trap house. What up, bro? Havana with the sky. How you feeling, man? How you feeling, Cowboy man. Nation? I'm feeling like we're on a button now. Jello beats, holla at me. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> yes, sir, man. Hey, man. As soon as we, as soon as we start putting that pressure on them, man, it seemed like they responded, man. And I, I'm happy, bro. Yes. Like the reason I'm so excited is because you know we, we almost like we've been starved, bro. So when we get some, we gotta be happy about it, man. I'm tired. Like I don't know if it's the the move or the fact that we was I'm sure the Cowboys then was done in free agency. You know what I'm saying? Well, when they start moving that money around, remember, landlord, we, we were kind of joking around like they they doing this for something, but but what is it for? Is it Odell? Is it for yeah. D Hop trade? Is it Judy? Is it Cooks? Is it you know one of those high end free agents that are left? But there was there was clear indication that something was happening, um, and I'm glad it was it was it was Cooks to be honest with you. Facts, man. Now, ain't, ain't this kind of strange? This is pretty peculiar that 
we get Cooks this year and they get Noah Brown. We could have just swapped it out last year, Kenneth kind of Sky. Like, what y'all doing? <laughs> so I'm try, I try, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it on the positive side. But there was a part of me I was going to talk about. Just imagine if you would have got him last year, what could have potentially happened. But we I ain't gonna cry over spilled milk. Be, I ain't gonna cry over spilled yeah, milk. Yeah, I'm just man. tripping off of how, how they went and pursued Noah Brown, and we we just could have swapped that out. We should have been able to work something out last year. It's just kind of strange. Yeah. But man, I ain't I ain't beggars can't be chosen, man. I'm no. happy. I'm happy with the pick. I'm yeah. happy. Yeah, baby steps, man. This this isn't quite you know going crazy in free agency or making these you know an absurd trade for a franchise type guy. But again, like we, we weren't expecting Dallas to do that, nor do I think Dallas needed to because they draft so well and they have a, a solid nucleus already. They just needed to make a couple hump type moves. And, and I think when you put these collectively together, I think you do. I think you yeah. got a, you got a, you got a hump type situation. And if you're new here, you're like, why I keep saying that? Because I believe in signing or draft or uh, trading for hump players. And, and I think Gilmore and, and Cooks maybe in years past would have been hump players individually. But I think now they're hump players collectively. And that, and I can't be mad at Dallas. It's a baby step. And I'm hopefully, hopefully, this is kind of the new mode that they'll be working with moving forward. Yeah, man. I the only thing I I know players like they, they want to shoot shoot this away because they wanted greater things, but man, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be appreciative of what you got. I feel like we got better with these last two moves. You can't hate the fact that we got better. We was a 12-5 and five football team who got better. We got a solid cornerback, too. We got a solid receiver, number two. And, God willing, we get some anything close to normal Michael Gallup next year. If we get anything from Jalen Tober. See, this is, they, they really giving me exactly what I wanted. Now, it's not the players in particular just as yet, but, like, they doing all the moves that I wanted. I wanted us to get a veteran receiver and – not re- depend on a rookie in the draft. They did that. You right. know what I'm saying? I wanted them to get us a, a, a solid cornerback, too. They did that. So I, I ain't got too many complaints. Like, I would have took Jared Judy, but I know that, that he wanted too much, and it was a little weird situation. So I ain't tripping too hard. I'll take Brandon Cook. I'm not going to be mad about it. And don't let the people steal y'all joy, man. They, You know, ever since – Soon as somebody get a star on their head, and they all of a sudden need to be retiring the next season, and they trade. So, don't don't fall into the mainstream the narratives about all this goofy stuff, man. Yeah, for sure. Don't don't let the haters yeah. get to you, man. Definitely these Eagle fans. I've been seeing people fight on on Twitter with Eagle fans, and I'm just laughing like, dog. If if y'all made these moves, y'all would be y'all would be parading Howie Roseman around like it was it was the greatest move in the world. Have some yep. respect. Hey, Have see. some decency <laughs> as a fan. God dang, though. Yeah. As soon as they lose they good players, they 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 trash on their team too. And like this is the last point I got, man. Like one one of the best traits I see from Cook is the fact that he's adaptable. He he can he's like he's an improv wide receiver. Every place he go, he can adapt to the situation and produce. Yeah. Every single situation he in. You know what I'm saying? That and now you're giving him a real quarterback. That's that's outstanding. Very underrated observation is, is yeah, he can go. He's been in multiple systems with multiple quarterbacks and has been productive everywhere he's went. Now he's going to get one of the better ones in the league, right? A, a coach that knows, in my opinion, he, he knows what he's doing. He won a Super Bowl, a ton of productive years as a head coach. And an offense that is a, is a good offense with what I think is going to be one of the best defense. He, he's in a perfect situation. And and that's why and bringing in Super Bowl experience, Super Bowl like, experience. You, you can't you why can't you, really hate on that. Why do you think he wanted to come here? You know, well, D Hop wants to come. Yeah. He he sees what they see the landscape of what's happening uh, with this team and, and and around the league. And as long as the front office you know puts some effort into it and understanding the landscape as well, there's no reason why Dallas shouldn't be competing for the NFC. And they gave us one thing we've been talking and complaining about, Scott. Speed, and yep. you for, must respect it. <laughs> for years. Oh, but, my goodness. Yes, years. sir. Yes, yeah. sir. I appreciate you, though, Scott, man. I'm going to let you get to the rest of your calls, man. I yes, appreciate sir. you, sir. All right, make sure y'all check out Landlord from Alabama at the Trap House later on, probably after this show, to be honest. Uh, yeah, man, the, the speed aspect is something we've been clamoring for, and there's a, uh, there's a statistic out there where Brandon Cooks is only second 
in the NFL with 25 plus yard receptions behind Tyreek Hill since he came into the league. You know, and, and again, he he may not have a whole bunch of them this year due to the West Coast offense, but psh, again, we don't even know how they're meshing this thing. So I, I'm putting a TBD in, into the actual you know, philosophy and X's and O's until we get some X's and O's, until we get down to camp, until we see some preseason games, until obviously we see some regular season games, we're kind of going to be on a wait and see approach. But again, check touchdown or check down him and, and CD lamb. It, it's going to be tough. If you get one-on-one coverage with cooks single high, or you don't even pay attention to him because you worry about lamb. It's going to be hard for me to to not send that man down the field, do some things on the intermediate level and, and let him cook. Like seriously. This is going to be hard for me to just nerf him as a as a shallow crosser, as a slant guy. He's going to get them, obviously. In in this offense, that's what you get in the West Coast. But you got a legitimate guy out there. Put some fear in these say make them back the hell off so you do have CD Lamb coming underneath. Right. Or you got Michael Gallup, who's who's done well with some of these type of screens right here, who's done well as that possession slant guy. And then if you, you know, you get a tight end or you got your tight end in Ferguson. Now you give him a ton of room to yak you up. He's shown he can do that. You know, his his the aspects that he's bringing to that he brings to the game, to the table. Opens up so many things for the Cowboys, opens up so many things for these players, for the scheme, for the coaches. And I, I don't know how you can't be excited. I don't know how you can't be excited. You know what? If you aren't excited, I got something for you that might help you out uh, in, that, in that department. No, no, I mean in other departments. But look, if you're one of 39 million men that suffer from ED, Boston Scientific can help you. They've created edcure.org to help you find your best cure. I tell you all the time, it's easy to get started. Head on over to edcure.org. Take the quiz. Learn your severity or risk of ED. And if you got questions, if you got a condition, they got content for you to help answer your questions, to help research that condition. The fastest way to find your best cure is to contact an ED specialist by browsing a list of experienced physicians in your area. Hit up edcure.org brought to you by Boston Scientific. You're listening to A to Z Sports. Do it live! At some point, hoping to broadcast in front of the millions of Cowboys fans to bring you the real. But for now, strap up and here's your host, Skywalker Steel. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. We'll do it live. Now, now, Trips. You gotta pay bills, man. We the little guys. So we need these. <laughs> so let see me me selling out with breaking news. ESPN signed Skywalker still to a ten year deal. <laughs> That'd be me selling out. <laughs> nah, Texas. I guess I am Texas T. I mean, I don't know anybody else that has this type type of sponsorship. It is what it is. We gonna get this money though. You don't get this money, man. All right. Look, let me be completely honest. There's just not a chance I can get to all y'all. And and I knew that was going to happen because this is a, this is a great day. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge topic. And if I don't get to you today, uh, I'm going to try to get to you tomorrow. So let's go ahead and try to work through these best we can. Next up. B-Bird. What's good, OG? What's up, Sky? How you doing, man? I, I'm I'm doing well, and and when these two trades went down, I immediately thought of you because this is me and you kind of been on the same page since yeah. you were one of three people watching my live streams. Quite literally, this yeah. is not a joke. He was one of three people watching my live streams, and, and we kind of been on the same page, man. But how you feeling yeah. about these acquisitions? I'm I'm feeling pretty good. I want to describe it to you. So so the Cowboys at the plate, three balls, two strikes. The pitcher pitches the ball. Yeah. The cowboy swings. I don't care what it is, as long as they swing. Yeah. And so that's the analogy I gave you, and they're swinging now, man. So I have no problem with that. One of the things that I'll tell you is that I'm I'm happy about is that the front office was aggressive, but they wasn't reckless. So they got they was aggressive at getting players, but they didn't just give up the form to get them. 
So what we gave away to get, you know, Cooks and Gilmore, you know, really, man, we're talking about fifth and sixth round picks, man. Right. You're not going to make an impact on your team mostly this year. So I'm okay with that. But the bigger thing that we always talked about is culture. And I think that is changing. And I, I'll tell you what marked it for me. When Big Mike was behind Kellen Moore leaving and Kellen Moore was their guy, then I said, wow, everybody else saw Kellen Moore leaving. I saw it's a power shift over there. Mm. Why? Because they've never done that really with anyone else. And they've given him the play calling duties. Yeah. And so now do you think so, – so I think Mike has something to do with this player acquisition also. Um, because I just think the, it's a culture change, it's a shift that should happen. And that, that Mike is bringing in, and I really appreciate that because one thing I want to say is that it's not Big Mike no more. This is a shout out to Landlord, it's Nefarious Mike. So <laughs> the, the Nefarious Mike, <laughs> Nefarious Mike is getting folks out of there and getting yeah. players in here. He ain't got time. We always talk about urgency. Yep. The front office doesn't have urgency because why? They're going to be there forever. Big Mike say, I ain't going to be here forever. I ain't no Jones. I need to get players in here, man, to, to get this thing. I ain't got time to be developing a guy that's going to be for three or four years down the line. No, I need these guys ready to play right now. I need to win now, or these guys are going to get rid of me. So give me players that I need that I can win now. And so I think that's what he got, man. So I just think there's a culture shift, a, a culture change, and I think Mike's behind it, man. And I, I can't be on the phone long, man. I just want to make that and just tell you I, I'm happy about the trade. And, uh, hey, go Cowboys, man. I'll talk to you later. Salute. Appreciate you, b Burt. Man, you know, uh, a few callers, a few fans have, have that same – there's been a hashtag going on uh, on Twitter, actually, the Mike McCarthy effect. I, I'm not arguing. I'm not even going to argue it. I actually want to investigate this more, to be completely honest with you. I want to investigate this a little bit more if, if, if McCarthy is behind some of this because in Green Bay, he – at one point when I was doing some research on Mike McCarthy when he was hired here, he actually was trying to advocate for, for more players. He was advocating for, for more participation in free agency and the draft. Huh, sounds like Dallas. And Ted Thompson, I believe, was basically like, no, you know, th this is how we're going to approach it. This is what we're going to do. We're draft and develop. Hence where you get that from. It wasn't Dallas saying draft and develop for years. Mike McCarthy came over. Uh, draft and develop, draft and develop. So I think he just got comfortable doing it that way. Comes to Dallas. I wonder if we got a little bit of petty Mike, right? Where Mike McCarthy is like, oh, I, I can't run my offense. Oh, all right, cool. Do your thing. <laughs> do, do your thing, Kelly. Go ahead, bro. So, so Mike McCarthy falls back a little. They lose in the playoffs in his second year in, in a fashion that pissed off the front office. And Mike came out and said, wait, 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 wait. I ain't scared of you, mother. <laughs> what you're not going to do <laughs> is put this on me. Okay, I can't sign who I want. I can't call my plays. Y'all want the running back that I don't believe is the best in there. But since this is what y'all want to do, let me speak up. So he wasn't as unsullied as we might have thought after that, that San Francisco game because he starts speaking up. Week one comes, week two comes, Kellen Moore gets weird. And he like, look, bruh. This is what we're going to do. We got to be smarter. I don't like your play sheet. I, I, I don't like what we're doing here. I can't call the plays. I can't install the offense. But here's what I can tell you to do. Stop with these damn reverses. Play a bit better complimentary football. And you saw Mike kind of gain some of that, like, like B. Burr said, that power back a little bit. But as it refers to these acquisitions... I want to do a little bit of diving. I want to do a little bit of uh, digging a bit deeper. If, if Mike McCarthy is on the power side of, of these moves, I do uh, the receiver, obviously offense, but Dan Quinn is, is the defense for, for Stefan Gilmore. Obviously I think they had to go to Gilmore or they had to go to Dan for this and they had to go to Mike for that. But, but I wonder if, if Mike is kind of trying to put the playbook together, working with his coaches and they said, Hey Mike, what you think about Brandon cooks? Ah, uh, yeah, we cool. Let me get back to the playbook. If that's the case, nothing really switches up. But if 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 Mike advocates, right? Hey, man, we can't be going into this season with some Dennis Houston and Jalen Tolbert, and we don't know that Michael Gallup. I ain't draft Michael Gallup, but you know, I was I agreed to sign him. I guess we need we need to do something. And this cat here, this right here, I want him. If 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 that was the case, then yeah, he's most definitely. Got a lot more power than probably Jason Garrett ever had in regards to that. I would like Ronald Jones as well. Uh, let's get to my Reading brother. He's pretty quick. 
Good morning, good sir. Good morning. God bless you and your family and your show, like always, Thank and your and your partner, Mars Lombardi. Yes, sir. I'm gonna tell you right now the three the place that they did this this weekend were very good. They cooking now. The front office is making moves. And like and like I tell you right now, with Cook taking the top off the you know what I mean, be able to run as fast as he does, that's gonna open up a lot of things for C D. And he's gonna also help C D in a lot of things because he's he's a proven he's a proven receiver. And whoever thinks that he's not, they all they gotta do is look at his stats. This man put thousand, thousand, thousand seasons constantly and different teams that prove that you're a good player. Because when you in one system and you do okay, but when you go to different systems and you keep on producing, that shows you're a good player. I think all we need now is a good no tackle, and I think we'd be on our way. Indeed, man. Appreciate you, uh, Mr. Ronnie, right? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Have Ronnie. a good one. God bless you and the show like always, my brother. Have you a good well. one. You as well. Yeah, I think what we'll do this week is uh, we're going to review most of the offseason, and then we're going to talk about what needs to happen moving forward, right? What else they got to fill, holes they got to fill, whatnot. And we'll, we'll do a deep dive into that because – content right we 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 gotta slow roll this thing out but um we're gonna talk about that for the rest of the week um let's move on let's get to let's get to rick what's good rick hey what's going on Scott? what's up with you i'm cooler man cooler man uh what's going on cowboy nation uh i'm happy i'm happy with the with the moves that they've been making uh i'm glad they're jumping on stuff like this early so we don't have to make uh, – if we fill this roster up, we can get uh, the best players available for certain positions that we need, that we still need a little bit on this team or just add on a little extra pieces. Uh, I think they can will and deal a little bit better doing stuff like this when it comes to the draft. You know what I mean? Either, either they want to trade down a couple spots or trade up, uh, put some picks together and trade up for something that they really want. I just think it's a smart move. You, you gave Dak Prescott a uh, you gave Dak Prescott a player that he he loves. Somebody that knows how to get open. Somebody that has some speed. Uh, he's a veteran. He's a uh, he's a uh, playoff tested. He's been to two championships, two Super Bowls. He didn't win, but he's been to them. You know what I mean? So that that says a lot. And even with Gilmore, Gilmore's been to a, a Super Bowl. So these two guys they I know he what won it takes. One, didn't he? Didn't Gilmore yeah, Gilmore won. won. Yeah, yeah, he won one with the Patriots. Yeah, so he he has a pedigree with him. Then he got then he got Diggs on the other side. Oh man, we, we we if they if they fill that defense out, finish just filling it out the right way, man, we could be something nasty, man. I really believe we can be something nasty. But my my thing is like this: get this dude some more offensive alignment. Get him some. Get him a. I, I want I want an offensive alignment with that first pick. I'm gonna be honest. With you. I want that offensive line blocking for Dak, so Dak ain't got to worry about things too much. I, I think if you give him a little bit of time, we we'll pick we'll pick teams apart, man. Because I believe I believe that Mike McCarthy is in uh, in uh, Jones's ear. I can see you can see the difference, man. But um, other than that, though, great uh, great pick. Let's let's see what else they got uh, planned for us. But that's all I got to say this morning. I'm gonna holler at everybody else later. All right, man. Later. Peace. Appreciate you, Rick. Let's get to Lamont. What's good, Mont? Lamont, you live. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you mad low, but yeah. you live. Okay. Uh, hold on real quick. You hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, so another, I was going to say, uh, one of the big reasons why the Brandon Cook move was huge was because if people haven't really uh, thought about it, y'all do know he played with Drew Brees and Tom Brady. He could pass on some of the knowledge that he learned from them into sure. Dak. Even though Dak is a smart quarterback, that helps Dak get that much better. And he he, he thrived under both, underneath both quarterbacks. So people need to think of it like that. Now, as far as the offensive line position, I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, we want Bijan. 
I don't really care for Bijan. I feel like as long as you solidify the offensive line, it really doesn't matter who you put back there. As long as they have some talent, they don't have to have first-round talent. It's been proven that most first-round running backs aren't really going to get you to the Super Bowl. Most late-round backs, mid-round backs, have been going to the Super Bowl as of recently. Undrafted guys also. And um, th- so I wanted to ask you something. That was my reason for um, calling in. Okay. Um, this draft, I know we need to go in and possibly get a left guard. Um, how would you feel about the possibility of taking – um, Osiris Torrance in the first, if he's there, or maybe trading back to get him, um, maybe a couple spots. And then later on, since he got hurt during the combine, taking an Andrew Voorhees, they're going to replace Zach Martin because he is starting oh, to get up there that. and age a little bit. And I think double dipping a guard would be a very smart oh, thing to oh. do this season or with this draft. Hmm. I. <sighs> I don't know that I would come away pissed off at that. Um, look, look, Osiris Torrance to me, I've mixed emotions. He's got the size. He's, he he can be nasty. I just I just I don't I don't I have to like hear about him mentally. Right? And then when I say mentally, I mean, is this a dude that wants to be great? Is this a dude that because he's got the ability? Uh, just sometimes when I was watching him, I only watched three games. It was like that kind of seems not to lot here. He kind of seems to just not go one hundred ten percent. Uh, here, but when he does, the dude, the dude can move you. So I'm not as off putting of Osiris as some may be, but um, Osiris and Voorhees in what round four ish, three ish? That might be tough. Three. Yeah, I would yeah. say Voorhees in like maybe round four if he's there. Four I for sure. Could be there um, he's there. I mean, I guess three. You I mean shit? That's not a bad idea. You know, if if Zach Martin's going to retire and Voorhees steps in, or Torrance and he move, I mean, that's not a terrible idea. That's a lot of, of, of O-line resources, though. Excuse me. That's a lot of O-line resources, but that's not a terrible idea. I, I've seen worse. Well, the reason why it also I was thinking about it makes sense because then that way you give Andrew Voorhees plenty of time to learn the system, to rehab that knee, and to pretty much get healthy, get adjusted to the NFL, get his body together for the NFL. And um, no, I get learn the playbook. No, no, no. I, I, I get I get what you're saying, and, and I'm saying I don't I don't necessarily think it's a terrible idea. But much like all this draft stuff, is who's on the board and picking at 26. You just you just don't know, man. Uh, but but uh, but O line definitely. You know, we filled the, the cornerback. You filled the receiver. O line. It was already a high priority, but it's it's definitely the blinking red light right now. Uh, come on. Okay, and just my last thing, real quick. So. I think um, make quick, make quick. This, yes, sir. I think what's going to happen is now. I think we're setting up to going to possibly draft either defensive line, interior, or either defensive end. They want to add more talent to the edge. They want to make Micah more of a roaming backer going forward. All right, y'all have a good day, bro. Salute, appreciate you. Uh, if I had to guess what it was setting up, I mean setting up to fill the rest of your needs that you you haven't filled in free agency but if we're being completely honest this is setting up for you to take best player available right i don't know the exact position and we, we don't we don't have an idea of draft boards are probably just now getting made um it's just so and, and i don't like to fake the funk to y'all scott who do you think of i i don't know yet man it's it's so much that goes on between the first the starter free agency and, and then obviously the draft where the Cowboys like to plug these holes and they're not done. They haven't even, they haven't even touched outside for agency yet. And we know they will. So uh, just, I think BPA of position of need. Here's a beautiful thing though, man. They're starting to plug these needs. Um, but that's, I know it's cliche BPA, BPA, but, but they're, they're setting themselves up to literally do that and not have to reach for a position of need. Now, O-line is there, and again, we'll get to that throughout the rest of the week. That is something they haven't touched yet. I ain't ready to rely on Tyron Smith. No way, no how. So they got to figure that left side out moving forward. But uh, I don't I don't mind taking Voorhees and saying, Yo, you know, learn, recover, and then, you know, Zach is really only has one year left. Uh, you try to get your, your ring, and if not, boom, you got his replacement moving forward. 
Lamitra, my my guy is is Zay and JSN. Uh, not saying that these other dudes aren't good, but but those are kind of my guys I like. I'm not attaching myself to them. Won't do it. Uh, but those are the dudes that 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 I like uh, most because I I just love Zay's game, explosive dude, and I think JSN is is ready. Like he can come in and can help a team right now as a third guy, uh, in the slot, and be productive. Everybody talking about Bijan. Um, let's get Los. Los, good morning, good sir. Good morning, Sky man. Hey. Looks like Jesus came to the Jones dreams after all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's that's a plus. So, I forgot you said that. Hey, add, <laughs> so, hey, adding Cooks helped Cowboys yeah. draft a lot, man. And I think a caller nailed it on yesterday's show on Law, on our Law Show. But he said that with this move, it really helps the Cow Cowboys basically set up their draft board to the best player available. Sure. Because for many years, for many years, many Cowboys – during the draft, we always drafted for need, you know. Look at the Taco Charlton's of the world. Look at the Lane Vanners. Not that Lane Vanners ah, was a bad pick. Come on, Lowe's. You, you, know, you go you go to criticize hey, them for their first round picks. They've been they've been hitting for well over a decade, I, you know, about a decade I should say. In the first well, round. I'm come on now. Taco and L V E. Yeah, I'm not criticizing too much, but I'm just saying some some of the players they missed back then they could have you know i mean they can't bat a hundred but um but i'm saying they they've been pretty damn good early early on you should have the most confidence in them drafting man so yeah hey well me saying that i feel way more confident this year draft because i mean hey if they if they choose someone like i don't know who's up in that board but that can give cowboys nations you know nightmares but if they choose someone like that i don't know what they're doing anymore but I really do think they're going to be with the best player available, and that should go, you know, help a ton. And last but not least, I mean, if, it, if, if any football head should know, if you can be physical up front and control the trenches on any side of the ball, you're making that other team a living hell. And you, I think we're really a defensive tackle and an offensive lineman away. And I'll, I'll leave you with, me, with, this, with this guy. Mm. My pick for the 26th pick, and this is – I already lock it in. This is my guy. Darwin Jones from Ohio State. Oh, Dewan. If we can get him in, Dewan Jones, correct, from Ohio State. If we can get him here, man, our all the line is looking nasty. You got, granted, Tyron Smith's not the most healthiest, but if he can, you know, stay up front and be a good rotational piece, you got Tyron Smith left tackle, Tyler Smith left guard, Tyler Biotish center, Zach Marta on your right guard, and you put Jones on the right side, man, you're going to be – you're gonna be whoa, 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 you're gonna be whoa, difficult to move whoa, in front. Whoa, whoa, what happened so, to Terrence Steele? I would move him to the left side whenever a Ty Tyler Smith gets Tyron Smith gets injured. Oh man, I see that's musical chairs all over again. Because I was I was just about to say, you know, I want to talk to Vosh and, or, and and see if if the if they if he trusts Dewan to to play left tackle. Um, if you you know if you trust Dewan to play left tackle, uh, yeah. And that was the other thing too. Is how we because I mean Cowboys have always put other old linemen to put them at different at different positions. So if Jones can play left tackle, man, mm. hey, I I, I, I love yeah. it already. So that's yeah. just my in my opinion, Scott. I feel like Thanks. we can solidify the offensive line. And you, I mean, I, I mentioned to you, Scott, we have never had like a true defensive tackle in a long time. You fill up those two gaps, hey, it's gonna be a real Real tough task, whoever lines up across from us in NFC, sure. especially since we have the best, not the best, but we have one of the better quarterbacks in NFC. And that's all I got to say. Peace, guys. All right, man. I feel like, man, my guys, my, my cousin Terrence still getting a bit disrespected here, man. Uh, nah, I don't want to move in the left tackle. I've seen that already. Now, if they decided to to make that a thing last year, you know, they were going to move Terrence to left tackle, maybe it's a different story. But I think Terrence still has a right tackle. is one of the better right tackles in the league. Uh, and he's on the up and up. On left tackle, now you got to get back into that. Ah, I'm good. But but Dewan Jones, if he can play left, I'd, I'd rather see if he can play left tackle and keep what I know is a short thing on that right side, Terrence Steele and, and Zach Martin, and uh, see if Dewan Jones, the pterodactyl, can play left tackle and then Ty Lure Smith will be your left guard. Um, I'm at the point wherever they decide to put Ty Lure Smith, 
I'll live with it. I, I want them to decide, though. Like, the upside of left tackle was something we talked about on draft day, if you go back and watch the draft video. Like, obviously, left tackle is a more valuable position, and that's what makes selecting him to them worth the first round is he can be a, a solid left tackle or whatever. Left guard is was that plug and play and come in and maul dudes right now and, and the potential to be a, just a dominant type of left guard. Pick it. Pick pick what you want them to do and then draft accordingly. I, but I feel like what they're going to end up doing in this situation is see what happens on draft day. And if the left side player is Osiris, then you kick out Tyler. If the left side player, which I don't think is happening, is a Paris, you know, from Ohio State, Paris to Johnson. And then you have this conversation of, I think Paris now to play left tackle, right? Or, or the cat from Oklahoma, uh, Anton, uh, Harris, you know, let these type of guys play left tackle and keep Tyler in. They give themselves that wiggle room, but I don't want to play with Tyler. This is why I don't want to go in with Tyron at left tackle, because now you're playing with Tyler. Now you're saying if Tyron go down, you likely going to play left tackle. Or, hey, hey, big fella, we're going to keep you at left guard until Tyron's done, and then you'll play left tackle. Pick a side. Figure it out. Let's stop playing this back and forth game. Snip, snap, snip, snap. And absolutely, the kid, I'm not dealing with no Josh Ball. He means nothing to me in this whole equation. Well, let's go. You could talk me into, well, let's go. Uh, you know, being involved in this rotation. Josh Ball, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I will get to Nacho, Marv, and maybe a few of these numbers I do not know. Um, and then we're going to wrap up the show. What's good, Nacho? Good morning, Sky. This good morning. Is, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's like baptism under fire. This is exciting. Remember the days of the uh, of the accumulated fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks. Stephen was all jolly and happy, and we would go and grab, you know, players that wouldn't even make our team, and 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 it was just like, in a sense, with all respect, garbage players. And what a what a change of of mindset. Yeah. So all of a sudden. You know, be, be making these moves that, that I mean, that, that really generate, uh, I mean, you're going after production. You're going after key players that can come into your team. And, and really, I mean, I mean, as a fan, I mean, we're feeling good right now. It's a good, it's a good vibe, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, I'm it's, glad they decided to move off these vibe. picks, man. I, I, I would trade, I would do this every single year if it was possible. Fifth round, sixth round picks, I mean, they, look, I know Deron Bland, I know uh, Donovan Wilson, I know Anthony Browns and, and whatnot, but I feel like the proven quality veteran is worth more than your fifth or sixth round pick. Uh, and that's just kind of how I feel about it. I would do this every single year. And, and you, I don't think you could possibly have 20 damn year one and year two dudes on your roster if your roster is good as you say it is. I don't think you can do it. So <laughs> you got to move some of these picks so you can get quality guys and have to rely on these rookies to play extensive minutes. Guy, yeah, I'm I'm like you. I, I'm not going to be waiting for the sixth and seventh round to get all excited about what we're going to do. You know, right, right, I mean, the, the thought of we've given up two two fifth rounders, a comp pick, and a sixth rounder for Cooks and and Gilmore. Oh my God! Yeah. I, I mean, that hasn't happened. In a while, that hasn't happened in a while, and I, I mean, what we're going to get in the room is we're going to we're finally going to have speed at re receiver, okay, and 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 now we're going to have Gilmore, who now gives. I, I mean, when was the last time we had a potential of two, in a sense, two really solid potential shutdown corners? I mean, this is this is amazing. Let me ask you this last question: What do you think now, moving forward between now as we head into the draft, and maybe even after the draft? Do we do you still see us having a little bit of wiggle room in cap space to still still make some moves, okay? Uh, whether that be a Calais bringing back Hankins, oh yeah, uh, uh, is Wagner is Wagner mm -hmm. out still or, or is it still there? That feels now out. that we've gone to the third, right, into the third and fourth week of free agency. You know, this is where you can get those players. Second. For like a really good, a really good, you know, value. Do you think we can still make those moves, or do you think we're going to make a couple little moves and then just concentrate on the draft? I mean, technically, Hankins and, and, and uh, Campbell are, are, will be considered little moves. They're not going to cost you much on the cap. Um, Wagner, though, Wagner feels. I feel like that's out. 
I would I would I would like yeah. a Bobby Wagner. I've seen some people say that make no sense. I don't know how that would make sense. I mean, he's better than any linebacker you got on the team. Not named Micah Parsons, and Micah Absolutely. is a rusher. But um, yeah, I think I don't I don't believe they'll sign a Wagner. I could be wrong. Maybe his, his price goes down. But in regards to little moves like uh, Hankins, yeah, one hundred percent. I feel like you know those type of moves are still in, hell. They just brought in Ronald Jones and they brought in the guard and, and, and the linebacker. So. They're 100% going to sign some guys in free agency, and they're going to be these lower-level guys that that fill these roles because they already got their big-ticket type of dudes in, in Cooks and uh, Gilmore. Good Absolutely. stuff. Uh, good, uh, good stuff, uh, Nacho. Can I, leave you with this, can I leave you with this last one? Let me give you my three players, okay, my three players heading into the draft. Sure. Unless things change. I got Bijan, I got JSN, and I got Nolan Smith. There you go. All right. Bijan, Jason, Nolan Smith. Appreciate All you, right. Nacho. All right. Have a good day, my man. Thank you. You, you as well. Bye-bye. Let's get Magic City Marv up in here before we get out of here. What's up, Magic City? What up, family? How you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. Now, now, how are you doing since your boy Steven went out there and started listening to what we had to say? Huh? <laughs> I, I know you don't like these type of moves, but 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 you got to feel good about this, right? I don't like me. I'm a cowboy too. You know I love this move, baby. Oh no 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 you no! You you don't you don't like spending bread. You you don't like that. You you want to you want the the, uh-huh. the rookie undrafted free agent like- dude to to be the starter and get thousand yards. That's what you want. So how you feel about actually spending some money a little bit to get one of these proven dudes? No, that was perfect because okay, we traded away the field. Yeah, and we gave away the six for next year. Yeah, so that didn't even hurt us. No. And we got a speed burner that I always wanted. Now, a yeah. lot of fans are talking about, you should have seen them. Just like you said, I was looking on, on the net, and the fans for the Cowboys was complaining about we got a speed burner that got over 6,000 yards. Right. He got the same many yards as uh, Coop has, over 8,000 yards receiving. And they complaining about some. Goddamn Hopkins and some goddamn. That was that uh, the Denver receiver that they was on Judy. Man, get the hell out of here with Judy. We already got a Judy and Hopkins on the team, and that's my boy C D Lamb. So we don't need them. We needed a speed burner now. That's gonna open. It. You know how dangerous it is. It's like you playing. I got Steel coming out the backfield running a four three. That's Pollard. And then I got a dangerous receiver going down the field with C.D. Lamb and them tight end. Man, get the hell out of here. And what it just did, it just made your boy, he got 1,000 yards that's coming back. He'll be all the way healthy now, number 13. And now you got a chance. And still, what yeah. people ain't talking about, the third phrase of the game is what, special teams? Yeah. So now, guys, look at this. Your receivers got to play. Semi, uh, Houston, they got to play special teams, all that speed. And look. They might not even make the team. Be, One of them ain't making the team. Right. That, that's for sure. Well, you got to make you got to make the team on the special team. One of them ain't like making it. Said, hey, they, unless somebody get hurt. They're not carrying no seven, seven receivers. No, no, you ain't carrying no seven receivers. They're going to carry six. Maybe. But yeah. uh, now we love that Kevin Joseph. Kevin Joseph is really ace on that special team. He like shit. I want to make this team some kind of way. <laughs> well, it's, it's sure. Ke- so, hey, hey, look, Kevin Joseph got a he got a fight and, sc- and scrap to make the roster now. Shit. He oh, about he's gonna your, make the team. He he's your he's race. Uh, he, 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 he one the he, he one the best gunner. He can get I, down that field quick. I mean, with him at uh, twenty nine. Yeah, I so, think you overrating him a bit. He look. CJ Goodwin's your best special teamer. Um, now, now look, Kelvin has some moments early nah, on. But, but nah, Kel- I will. Hold, hold, hold I'll fight hold. for that. Okay, I can. Uh, I can. I can. I mean, look, Kelvin Joseph. I can prove it. I can also prove that Kelvin Joseph might have cost you more towards towards the after his first hot his hot start on special teams, and he helped you. I mean, he made so many knuckleheaded he, plays on special teams. He got better though. Right, but your he best special it, teams guy it, is still it, on the team. And I'm talking about yeah. C.J. Goodwin, right? So Kelvin Joseph yeah. is yeah. your at this moment um, probably his fifth or sixth corner. No, yeah, yeah he's Kelvin f- Joseph no. is your fourth corner. 
I'll put some money on what? it. What? I'm going to bet you right now, $50, Kevin Joseph, turn it up in the because it's off his head. He's the most talented in the corner. Now I got Gilmore in there to just teach him. He's going to learn. He's going to pick that Marine. I'll put some money. he be the fourth corner. I'm betting you $50 right now. Everybody on here listening, Kevin Joseph is going to make the team because he's starting on special team. He's I mean, the look, first one down there. Make, making and, the team is not a big deal. I mean, he can make the team as a sixth corner and play special teams. But you're saying Kelvin Joseph is, is CB4 right now. I'll put the corners on the list here, and I got Trayvon Diggs, Stephon Gilmore, Deron Bland, Jordan Lewis. Those are the top four gonna corners. Ke- it's going to be Kevin Lee, number five. I'll put some money on Right, right. For who, though? I will put some money. For who? Because it's going to be, like you just said, it's going to be Gilmore, Trayvon, Bland. It's going to be Kevin. I'll put some money on it. So Kelvin's going to play. Unless they drop, now, now, unless they drop the corner yeah. in the first round, which they still could do. You know what I'm saying? But, like, y'all make good sense. I want that, uh, the offensive line. So the, oh, no, 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 move over this. So the guy that got the shot to be a starting cornerback that they benched is, is, is you're saying he is your, you know, one of your top four corners, the dude that they benched he, yeah. for Nation yes. Wright. Yes. Why, you remember, but, but let me he ask, gonna, he gonna be out. Is it, hold, 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 hold on, hold on. Is, is this just like blind optimism as in like, Hey, look, I'm not giving up oh. on Kelvin Joseph or is this, no, they're not gonna Hey, do it. you know why? No, no, Marv, you gotta let me finish here. I'm not. I'm okay. not asking you what, what they think. I'm asking you what you think. Why you believe he's he's one of the top four corners on this team, where he wasn't even a top six corner last year on a worse well, roster. Okay. Cornerback wise, I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, yeah. okay. The first year he played, uh, he in the, he started getting better. Remember in the Philly game, everybody had hopes. Sure, he, but he, but he we're not talking out, about remember? two in years ago. We, we're started, talking about you know we're the last. No, year. I'm just giving you. I'm just yeah. giving you an example. He started out at yeah. the end of the year, so we were like, okay, we got a corner. And then that incident happened, yeah. and then all hell broke out. It was in his head. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, what is he doing? Now, this is third year. It he is. got a veteran in there. He knows the system. But he got a veteran he in there. He's the fastest he's, corner he's, on he, the team. He got a veteran in there, Marv, he's not happy about, by the way. Yeah. Who's not happy? Him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He went out on on Twitter yeah. or on Instagram and was like, "Why are they doing this to me?" <laughs> so, you know. well, that's him. He got to get a hey, still hey, because you got to come. Hey, I mean, you got to come play, my brother. You I, know what I'm saying? I, 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 like, no, that's yeah. what I'm trying to tell you. He hasn't come to play yet. Yeah. Meanwhile, the rest of yeah. these dudes have. So, but okay, I, Marv, I ain't gonna keep on pounding pounding you on it, man. Give me your final thoughts on the day. Well, I love look like we're on our way. I know. A lot of people can't get mad at Cowboy, but you got another thing you got to watch out for. What about that defensive end that's still out there? That one from the coast, number 91. And Gakwe? You think that? Yeah. What do you think about him? If they sign him, what you do? Oh, I, I like that signing a lot. Um, I, I don't <laughs> know how much he's going to cost him. We can look at his market value, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think they could add another. They were trying to get Dante Fowler back. I think. Uh, Adding another pass rusher is not a bad idea. You can never have an, enough pass rushers, right? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's like me and you said, we want the middle. Once we, we're going to sign Hankins back. I know that. But we're going to draft either the right. guy, Mackey, or the D-tackle from Baylor, or the one from uh, Wisconsin. Them the three D-tackles that I like. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I like I'm the, Yeah, I'm with you, Mark. I love it. Love your show. And uh, I'm just happy, man. We got a chance to do it. Now it's up to hey, our quarterback. I love my quarterback. They go all not everybody's kind of quiet, and they they scared that Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, I'm putting it. He's gonna turn it out because now he's gonna run a system that he used to doing in 2016. Hey, all the fans on here, we gonna nope. get the Dak Prescott back for 2016 when he only had like four interceptions. Trust. He'll probably throw a little more than that, but but that's fine. That's fine. I don't need him to throw for you. But, hey, appreciate you, Mark. Yes, sir. Good show, brother. Thanks, sir. Salute. Boy. That's that's, that's, that's my guy. Um, So, Yannick Ngakwe, according to Spotrack, is at $14.8 million per year. I don't know how realistic that is. We're in week two of free agency. But, uh, yeah, I I don't think. 
no, no, I know <laughs> that's not even a realistic option. Dante Fowler is not a bad depth guy to bring back at all. I thought Dante Fowler played well last year. I think he'd be be great as a rotation dude. Um, I think he understands he's in the part of his career where he's not going to be the guy he was in LA. So I'm all about, I'm all for bringing Dante back as long as that doesn't stop Sam Williams from, from his development. Um, never can have too many pass rushers, but Yannick and Gakwe, that ain't happening. That's uh $14.8 million per year. Allegedly that could go down. All right. I don't know any of these numbers, so I'm just going to pick and get a couple and make them quick. Let's get to 505. What it is, what it do. Hey there, how's it going? It's going well. Um, so I wanted to bring up something that I don't think people have been talking about. What I what I would make the Brandon Cook trade great, for, like even better for me, is next year he's going to be making 15 mil. So he's going to get paid about 20 because that's just the going rate. Regardless of, oh, if anybody says, well, this person's better, but he makes more money, it's just the going rate of the market. So 20 plus... Uh, 18 from Brandon Cooks plus 15 from uh, what's his name uh, Gallup. I think I think that's a lot of money to be putting into the wide receiver room. What I what I think that make it even better is if Jerry could sit down with Brandon Cooks and say, Hey, we're going to give you a two years two year extension, making 18 no. 20 million, just so they could spread out the money. No, 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 no. You know what? No, no, no. I'm not saying like 18. Per year, I'm saying like 18 collectively to yeah. spread out the money. So, so there's really no need to touch his contract. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, unless you're unless you're <laughs> you believe he's going to be. Um, I'm trying to think of some some, 30, some 30 plus year old vet. I mean, he'll be 30. Yeah, he's young enough. But yeah, he's young. He's 29. 30. Yeah, it'd be thirty. He could, or, he could. It'll be thirty when the season. He could, we could starts. get him to 34, be, 33, 30. 34. Oh my, you are. Yeah, that's a bit. I'm. That's, I'm no. Just, just for what? I'm, for well, why? I'm not. I'm not saying premium dollars. I'm saying like, I mean, you, like nine, I, eight, nine million a year. Why would he do that? Like that's. Why would he do that? Yeah. I mean, just to have a because, I mean, he's made his money so far, and I think it'd be it, for him. It makes sense to stay somewhere, so that after next year, if he decides he keeps on to play, that he's not, you know, just getting bounced another team for that money anyways like people are gonna be like well you're 30 31 32 we'll give you eight million to go play for i don't know the next team's gonna be like the so dolphins let's say or something like that collectively take a, a eight million dollar pay cut just to it was eight million yeah about eight, roughly eight million dollar pay cut just to stay in stay in dallas and rip up the contract if i'm his agent I, no no I no an, ex, let him an extension it's, so it's not so there we go so an just extension, an extension to split out the money but you don't need to. The next year, his cap hit is sixteen point five million dollars. If he if he plays up to the level of that, that's a bargain. The the going rate yeah. is twenty plus million dollars. You're getting him for a bargain. And if he doesn't play up to that level, you can cut him and you save sixteen point five million dollars. Oh, he's yeah. he's he's nothing on the books next no, year. No, he's he, yeah. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah, earlier. You, I thought he. I thought he was. I was like, oh man, we we have I mean, a lot of no. We he's, have three dudes that are going to be making north no. of fifteen. I'm not talking. No, next so, year. Okay. Well, Gallup's making fifteen next year. Yeah. Okay. Cause after restructures. Yeah. yeah. And CD's going to make at least twenty. That's 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 what it is now. Sure, but what I'm what I'm telling you is, if, if you just don't touch his contract. Sixteen point five million dollars, technically, if you keep him around, is the last year of his deal. So he can play yeah. on the sixteen point five million dollar cap, and he's done after that. You don't have to deal with dead money. You don't got to deal with extensions for a thirty two year old player. None of that stuff, right? He'll be going into, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. thirty one year old player or whatnot. And if you draft a young guy, that young guy fills it in. There's just really no need to touch it. Um, you know, I, I just don't see the reason to do that. Um, now yeah. if you believe he's going to turn into a guy like Larry Fitzgerald that can play well into his thirties up to 38, 35, 36 or something like that, then sure. But I'm already looking to do that with Brandon cooks. I'm looking to get about a year or two out of him. Uh, and if it, if it, if it works out awesome, you move forward. If it doesn't, you don't really cost yourself any extra years, me personally. Um, but, but it sounds like you want to extend them and, 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 and keep Gallup cooks and lamb. I mean, not a bad trio, but 
31, yeah. 32, 33. I ain't really trying to keep cooks that long now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that that's also also the reason why I like cooks a little bit more than De- uh, DeAndre Hopkins because how much money it's going to be next year. And people are going to be like, well, why can't we keep CD and, and uh, Diggs? And like this, the, the fact that we got Hopkins, I mean, that we got uh, Cooks for $10 million less than Hopkins, roughly, that, that, that makes a lot more sense for us to try and keep both. Yeah, I we mean, just we never know what, we never know what Hopkins yeah. would have cost on a cap, though. So I can't speak on that because Hopkins said he'd be willing yeah. to come here to, to renegotiate his contract. And yeah. you're, you're, you're clearly, if you get hop, you're going to probably extend DeAndre Hopkins. That's a different, yeah. like extending D hop yeah. and extending cooks, I think are totally different. I think DeAndre Hopkins is one of the best receivers of his generation where cooks has been one of the better receivers since he's been in the league. That's no knock on cooks, but he's not DeAndre Hopkins. Now, if you were having this conversation That's about D hop, totally different story, but, but, but Brandon cooks, I, I'm not in the, in the market to extend him. I don't know that Dallas is, um, but hey, maybe maybe they will. Maybe you want something here. Okay. All right, man. Yeah. Well, I'll catch you on Vox Show later on. Yes, sir. All right. See ya. Interesting. That's why I tried to uh, show this earlier, which is why I think this move is even is better because you don't have to touch his his contract. I mean, they're taking six million this year, and then next year, let me turn this up. Next year, his cap hit of $16.5 million, there's no guaranteed money. So you can move off of him. If you sign him to an extension, now we're adding new money to the contract. Um, and if it's a total bust this season, you you probably can't move off of it now. So I will let this play out. Let, let, let it play out. He's on the books for two more years. $16.5 million is not a lot of money if you're going to get a guy that plays up to that level. It's really not, uh, according to this new market for wide receivers, which is 20 plus, you know? So yeah, if you got to pay, you know, cooks and you got to pay, uh, Gallup, who honestly, that might be the guy you look to move on from, but cooks and and, and Gallup, a lot of money. That's just the cost of business, you know? And then he's off the books in next year. You can move on. You can do, I don't know. I I wouldn't touch this. Me personally. I let it rock. Uh, 706, what it is, what it do. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, good morning, good morning. Good morning, sir. Um, I like the Brandon Cook pick up. It, um since I'm this I'm gonna make it quick. Since okay. twenty fifteen, he's had six one thousand yard receivers yards receiving. Six one thousand yard receiving. That's a blessing. That is a blessing for the Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only a handful of guys that have done that, yep. And, and with the draft, offensive line with the first pick, I think they want to get a, a player that's going to play in the first round. On the defensive line, if it ain't Jalen Carter, they're not going to get defensive line. But, but you got you got Tyron Smith, you got Zach Martin. They ain't they they're starters. You're not going to draft no no offensive linemen on the first pick with those guys still there. Now, I, I doubt that. that. I doubt that. It's me. That's. They, I think they want starters. Does that first, with that first pick? Does Tyron Smith's contract change your mind since he's only getting paid three? Well, I don't know what the cap it is, but I think I could guarantee three million or something like that. Maybe it's six million, but he's not getting paid a lot. Put it that way, and he's on a one year deal. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. With and with Zach leaving, they'll probably be gone next year. Both will be gone next year. You you want to get the uh, like you said, best player available. If they don't get the if Jalen. Carter don't fall to, to 26 or they don't jump up and get him, they're not going to go defensive line. With running back, it's, it's iffy. I don't know. It might be Robinson. I don't know. But I think they will get a running back. I heard somebody say it. They can't win with a running back. I'm going to give you a history. I'm, I've been a fan for 51 years. Uh-oh. I remember all the Super Bowls. The Super Bowls they run, they won with first-round draft pick running backs. You got Tony Dorsett, Hyden Coke winner, and Emmitt Smith. Both first round backs. Yeah, so yeah. Not it's, saying it's, it's twenty twenty three though. You know what I mean? I know. I understand. I understand that. I'm not saying they get running back, but all. But you know, it, the best player available. I I like it, but 
off the line. I'm not really with with with, with Martin and Smith there. I don't I, I don't know. Right. Gotcha. All right, man. Hey, appreciate, appreciate the call. Thanks for calling in. Uh, I actually want to touch on something you said real quick. Yes. Go Thanks, bro. Have a good one. The man said, go ahead. Uh, they all crazy in this chat. Um, So, Tyron Smith, I guess we got the details. Tyron Smith's cap hit is $8 million. All right. <laughs> I didn't what I do I didn't do anything I'm just saying you know I, I feel him and, and I knew it was coming when he said you know 51 years and every time we won the Super Bowl I look I get it the Joneses think the same damn way that's why this what did Jerry say last last year his team goes as far as Ezekiel Elliott well we found out it went as far as Tony Pollard you know jokingly but uh yeah you know I get it, man. Look, I'm not I'm not one of the OG fans. So that is that is entrenched in y'all being, right? Tony Dorsett, Emmitt Smith, right? That's that's entrenched in y'all. I feel you. It's way too much evidence to say you don't need to do that. But I feel you. Uh Tyron Smith, eight million dollars on a cap hit. On the cap, I'm sorry. Three million dollar base salary. So eight million. I know it was eight. Maybe the eight does make him entrenched as that starter. Eesh. I don't like it. All right, one more. 817. Send us out. Hey, what's going on? Good morning, man. Yeah, first I want to say I appreciate the content. Um, Thank you. Always enjoy you, boss, everybody. So, uh, you, I wanted to respond real quick to another caller about the quarterback situation. Okay. Um, I think it's actually unique when you talk about CB uh, quarterback four, because usually like your backup slot uh, corner wouldn't be CB four. But in our case, I think you're right that Jordan Lewis is because uh, with Bland being able to play inside or out, if anybody gets injured, you put Jordan in the slot. Like if an outside corner gets injured, you know, you put Jordan Lewis in the slot and then play Bland outside. So I think he, he is CB4. But I could see the argument of, like, maybe Kelvin Joseph takes a step and becomes the next best outside. Yeah. Uh, I don't I was, know that Jordan Lewis. That's an excellent observation. Outside. And I was trying to get Marv to, 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 to lean that way, right? Like, no, I just believe that he'll take the next step to, to, to you know, to supplant Jordan Lewis. But I don't know how at yes. this, this second, you know, March 20th, you can come in here as confidently and say, you know, Kelvin Joseph is one of our top four cornerbacks on this team when he wasn't even technically like top six or seven. Like, do we realize they went out and signed yeah. two random dudes on the, fr- the street <laughs> and played them over him? You know, I, I don't have that same confidence as Marv does. He has to go out there and prove it to yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's like when we talk about the O-line, I think you could say the same thing about quarterback with you want your best three out there. So I think like it's always going to be – like Bland, unless he's the one that, that gets injured. I think you always want Bland out there inside or out. 100, um, 100%. Yep. So, yeah. I, but it's, it's good to have that flexibility. The thing I actually wanted to call about was a question to you, and I'll make it quick. Um, so, I kind of understand why the Cowboys have been so big on possession receivers uh, with the Eric Coriel, like, vertical offense. Uh, you you want to try to get one-on-ones, and so it's good to have, like, like I think about Dez in his prime and a possession receiver where it doesn't matter how tight the quarterback is on him, you can just kind of throw it up to him. So I understand that wanting the possession receiver, but I feel like moving to West Coast, that that's not as valuable because you're relying more on, on space than, than like the one-on-one matchups. So when I think about speed and like bringing in a guy like Cooks, I think back to the vertical offense and think, oh, he takes the top off the defense. But I'm just curious on your take when you look at a West Coast offense, um, what is speed? Like, how do you utilize speed in the West Coast system to be an advantage? You're talking about more so. I hope that makes sense. I'll try to make sense of it because it's it's an interesting thing what you're saying because technically, if you look at Mike McCarthy's history, he's got a ton of of bigger receivers, actually, those, those possession guys you talk about. 
um, the, the smarter, the smaller, shiftier, speedy guy that he took and, and molded well was Randall Cobb. I'm trying to find this graphic for you uh, that I may, I probably got rid of it, where I list all of the six foot one, two plus guys that McCarthy has drafted or signed, and there's a plethora of them. Like he, he had a type. You're not wrong uh, about the West Coast. I'm sorry, about the Air Coriel situation. The Cowboys had a type, right? Six two, 200 pounds, possession type of guy. They just completely ignore speed, which is wild to me because they had a vertical offense. <laughs> so. That was weird to me that they would just completely ignore speed in a vertical type of offense, but neither here nor there. Um, whereas the West Coast, I don't necessarily think it's about a size metric, but more about a playmaking ability. Um, it's not a bad thing to have a West Coast, I'm sorry, a, a possession guy in West Coast because you maybe you want to get a quick slant to him. Maybe you want to get him, throw the ball to him in contested areas because it's shallow, right? And you need that big body, the, the Lazards of the world, the Jordy Nelsons, of the world, um, Greg Jennings, like these guys won because they had that size as well. Whereas you're talking about the drags, the overs that, that this new modern West coast offense, they're incorporating more of the space, as you say, with some of these space players, it's also not a bad idea to have those on the roster either. So I don't necessarily think there's a, a size metric in modern football at the receiver position anymore. It's more like fit number one and number two are you able to make plays when you get the rock in your hand if you're not then you become michael gallup right where hey man we got three routes for you <laughs> you know you're gonna run a nine you're gonna run a slant you're gonna be our red zone guy whereas cd lamb's a space guy uh brandon cooks can be a space guy kamate turpin can be a space guy and before we had any of those dudes or when we didn't have kamate turpin or brandon cooks it was who said wilson it was the the Terrence Williams, the Des Bryants, these were all your prototypical possession dudes for your Eric Coriel. But I don't know if I answered your question, but I don't think there is a, a, a size metric that they need to have in this system. It's just a matter of can you make plays with the ball in your hands when you get it? Because I'm going to get it to you fast. And if not, I hope they have a plan for those dudes like Michael Gallup. Yeah, no, that answers it. I, I appreciate that. Uh, last thought, and then I'll, I'll let you go. Um, I just want to throw out, like, with the Osiris Torrance thing, because we're being mocked to him a lot, like, we need to plug the left guard. Uh, the thing about him that I wonder about is we tend to like to get guards out in space, like pull our guards a lot. Um, I know with Solari, things might change uh, with the run scheme, but, you know, the one thing about Osiris Torrance is he's not going to move yeah. very fast. Like, he's a big guy and not a quick guy. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder with scheme fit with him. Like, I think he's a good player, and I think he's someone that will come in and start day one. Pass protection, good. But I just wonder in the run scheme if he would work, being kind of as slow as he is. Now, that's a fantastic point. So, he, 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 oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll just end it with that. Thanks, man. Great call. What's your name? Uh, Adam. Adam. Gotcha, Adam. I'll lock you in here. Adam from where? Appreciate it. Uh, from Dallas. I'm from Dallas. All right, cool. I'm from Dallas. Appreciate you, man. Yep. Uh, oh, that's a that's a good point. And we again one of those situations where we don't know what what Mike Solari is going to do. We we kind of have to wait and see. But no matter what he decides to do, that is true. Well, Cyrus Torrance is not a a, a guy that you're going to get out in space, uh, and, and have running like a Lyle Collins. Now, Solari did for years implement. In a, a power-based offense with uh, San Fran, and they had what's the dude's name, y'all? He went to the Cardinals. Uh, Mike, is it Yapati? I cannot pronounce his name, but he was a very similar player in the sense of big, mean, aggressive guard, heavier dude. Not necessarily going to be a guy you want to pull a whole bunch, but you know they ran that power scheme to success with with Frank Gore and those guys. So. You know, if, if he decides to bring some more, yeah, Iapati, as I said, Iapati, you know what I'm talking about. But I, if they decide to bring more power scheme to the Cowboys, then yeah, Osiris Torrance fits that perfectly. Uh, but if you're if you're looking to get guys a stretch to reach to get to the second level uh, quickly, hell, like you said, pull and get up there. This ain't this ain't Tyler Smith. Tyler is athletic enough and fast and quick enough to do that. So, yeah, man, what, what, again, we haven't talked to Solari. Solari hasn't talked to us. We don't really know what he's going to bring. 
a part of me as a content creator, as a cowboy diehard, hates that we don't really know exactly what we're getting, but also love the fact that everything is kind of new to the league. The league doesn't know what's going on and they're not going to talk about it. So it, it sucks as a content creator, but I think it's great for when the Cowboys get ready to start implementing things. You're going to have to approach this offense. No more of a, eh, let me see if I can find this for you as we get up out of here. I don't necessarily think, necessarily think you're going to get any more of this. Uh, last year we learned that they went, they really wasn't going to commit to the run game. And you know, the runs that they did, they was, you know, going to try to, get outside and not run into the interior. But most of the running game was quick game. You know, a lot of curls, a lot of hitches, you know, a lot of slants and stuff. So we kind of knew that going in, so we was able to attack it. We knew that going in, so we was able to attack. I don't think you're going to get a lot of that. Obviously, you you build tendencies. You um, have research teams. Let me close this. You have research teams that will put tendencies together. But when Devin White came out and said, oh, we knew what they were going to do. My man came out and said curls and what did he say? Curls and hooks. And when we tried to say that throughout the season, people got mad. I wanted to blame everybody else. I'm trying to tell you, when the league knows what you're going to do, it makes it that, that much harder for everybody. Screw the quarterback. Everyone. Everyone's job becomes that much harder. So I don't think Coach McCarthy is going to be as predictable early on. We'll see what happens once we get to the latter part of the season. But that 30 to 35% playbook change, I think, is, is a massive deal. It might not sound like a lot, but if it's the right 30 35%, that opens up so much more. And, and it's going to take probably a year for the, for teams to, to get going. And if teams don't pick it up, damn it, the Cowboys can get into the postseason and run into any team and not have to worry about they know what we're going to do. They know what we're going to do. Oh, and we got dudes. Uh, good stuff today, Cowboys Nation. Apologies to not get for not getting to everyone there on the phone lines. Call back in tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow. So tomorrow is on the clock. We're going to be doing our on the clock series, talking running backs with Foots the King. His top five running backs. Um, we'll open the phone lines after like we always do. So we're getting into a rhythm here in this offseason. And Wednesday, we'll pick it back up. Moving forward, maybe we'll get some news. Maybe, maybe Cowboys will sign somebody else. But uh, make sure y'all lock in and tune in. If you enjoyed today's show, hit that like button. It is our, as my guy Vach says, virtual currency. Only if you enjoyed it. I'm not telling you to subscribe and like just cause, cause I don't subscribe and like the stuff I don't like. You know, I noticed we got some Eagle fans up in here. I ain't scared of you, mother. Hi, and bye. Nah, appreciate y'all being here as well. Uh, I mean, I know y'all was fussing in there with, with uh, some of these Eagle fans. I don't know if any of the mods had to block them, but this is why I let the mod squad do what they got to do. Appreciate y'all. Later on, we'll be on Vosh and Barty Live breaking down this trade. You do not want to miss it. Okay? You never want to miss a show. But when me and Vosh get together, it's a vibe. So make sure y'all come through. And then Mo will be back on later tonight on A to Z Sports Primetime for the evening show make sure y'all rock with that and hit up a to z sports dallas.com for his articles and all of our wonderful writers matt cole uh shane and so forth man we're going to continue to grow that thing all right Ooh, i don't want to forget <sighs> almost forgot super chats not today today is not the day to forget super chats y'all not the day to forget it so bear with me i think there was a lot rolling through enough put it that way all right let me get to that and then we'll get out of here super chat towboat drop one appreciate you said i thought sky was going to start throwing hands with the autocorrect police on twitter over the weekend <laughs> brandon brandon it's all the same we're happy yeah you know twitter what we do we can't we can't be wrong we can't even spell somebody's name wrong but autocorrect autocorrected me to brandon and then there was a it's brandon with an i sorry tough guy uh super chat Jawan dropped one said good morning scott oh 20 appreciate you Jawan. good morning good sir super chat b bird dropped one early and said shout out to the front office for being aggressive and not reckless facts uh this is a time to shout out the front office now is it the time to 
go crazy and throw a party for doing what we wanted them to do and what we think is doing their job? No. But if I'm going to get on them, I got to praise them when I when they do something that I think is the best thing for this team. And that's that's what I, I'm going to do. So shout out to them. Super chat. Dro dropped 10 and said, damn good move. We pick up a good wide receiver while also not stepping on Lamb's toes. Mm. When his contract comes up, Steven would try to negotiate a team-friendly deal by reminding 88 that he's still the number one wide receiver. Well, Dro, let's slow down. When his contract come up, we'll probably hear something about C.D. Lamb and this and that. You know how they like to negotiate. But um, I hope they get it done because C.D. Lamb should be a core part of this team moving forward. Super chat. Intelligent Savage, appreciate you. Drop 10 and says, salute, Scott. We finally got Cooks in the building. Now that's straight up fire. 100 on that move. Moving forward, what in free agency would you like to see next, if any? That's going to be our topic later this week, probably. Uh, there's, there's a handful. There's a handful, and everybody's touched on them. Offensive line, defensive line, second level, things like that. Um, unless something happens over the next day or two, we'll, we'll jump back into Catboy Criteria. Uh, Cause now we're in free agency now, I and mean, that cowboy criteria with these trades—that's they—they they did well. But back in free agency, uh, we'll see if we can find some some positions in free agency that will uh, help solidify this team. Super chat. And then Lemitra dropped one and said, "Who's gonna wear 13 now, or Trey Gallup? They're not gonna trade Gallup. Maybe goes back. To- hey, Cooper Rush, come up off that 10. He's worn 10, 12, and 13. Who got 12? Anybody got 12. So maybe he goes back to 12. Or maybe he may Cooper Rush come off that 10. In any way, in any rate, appreciate y'all for joining me today. Really good show. I knew this was going to be a good one. Tomorrow, come back on a clock draft series. We're talking running backs with my guy Foots the King. I'll see y'all then. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. Stall back. See, the Cowboys don't have a problem, though, you know, given these, these historically great numbers. But but you're right. They haven't done 12 in a while. Huh. I tell Cooper Rush to come off that 10, dog. You got to come off that 10. We out of here, though. Love you.